know, I'm a hometown boy. I came here from a small high school about 20 minutes west of Norman, so I'm real close to home. We played Nebraska, tore my first ACL in my left knee. The next year, I ended up tearing my ACL in my right knee. You know, with someone telling me I shouldn't be out here playing. The Heisman Trophy was one of the best things that's ever happened to me, but I'm not in it for the individual awards, I'm in it for the team awards. This season is everything in the world to me. Our main goal is to win a championship. I can't see any other way for it to end. Houston at number two, Oklahoma, next. Oklahoma is the place to be on a Saturday in the fall. That's because it's Oklahoma Sooner football time. They have come, they are ready, and they want the Sooners to kick it off in Norman. Tonight from Norman, Oklahoma, it's college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday. Another sellout crowd has come to Memorial Stadium tonight to see the number two Oklahoma Sooners play host to the Houston Cougars. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ron Thulin, and for the third straight year, Charles Davis is my broadcast partner. And Charles, let's talk about the Oklahoma Sooners. 15 senior starters return and a Heisman Trophy winner. They want to finish the job they couldn't finish last year. This year, they're going to rely on an offense that is probably the most versatile in the Bob Stoops era. And that's due to the reintroduction of the running game, led by two terrific backs who made their debuts last week as a tandem. The flash and the dash will come from the scintillating freshman, Adrian Peterson. 100 yards in his debut including a terrific 35-yard run for a touchdown. And the production and leadership comes from Kiwan Jones. Last week, the career highs in carries and yardage were both terrific backs. Last year, Oklahoma wanted to pass first to set up the run. This year, they wanted to run first to set up the pass. Well, let's go to the other side of the football. The Houston Cougars coming off their first bowl game in some seven years. Last year, they did it with offense. Now, if Oklahoma's offense is versatile, Houston's offense is unusual, but they're doing it with a sensational sophomore quarterback. Great term, Ron. So unusual, they don't even have a name for the offense yet. But Kevin Cobb is running Art Ryle's system that he brought with him from Stephenville High School in Texas, and he's running it almost to perfection. 25 touchdown passes last year against only six interceptions. He's a terrific young man, very poised. Now you talk about the keys to the game. You mentioned the word poise. If you're a Houston Cougar, that's probably number one. Right out of the gate because Oklahoma notoriously starts fast, so they must weather the early storm of the Sooners. And on offense, sustained drives to keep the Oklahoma offense on the bench. And last but not least, they must be great on defense in the red zone. Limit Oklahoma to field goals instead of touchdowns. Well, if you're a football team from Texas, Oklahoma has your number. They've won 13 straight at home against teams south of the Red River. We'll step aside, send it to our studios in Atlanta, and here is our host again this year, Ernie Johnson. EJ, college football on TBS brought to you by Jeep. If it's not trail rated, it's not a Jeep 4x4. Allstate, are you in good hands? Chili's, want more flavor in your life? Come to Chili's. And the Home Depot, go from wondering how to knowing how at the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Beautiful night at Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners set to take on the Cougars. The third member of our broadcast team again this year is Craig Sager. Let's send it down to Craig. Well, today's game on the anniversary of September 11th is an anniversary and a celebration and also a memorial. First of all, a memorial to those who lost their lives three years ago. Then also a tribute to the armed forces currently serving in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kuwait. All 82,112 fans here today received American flags as they entered the stadium. And we had a flyover from Shepard Air Force Base, four T-38 Taylons. Everybody here was reminded of the value of freedom. Obviously, time has passed. The memories have not faded. I'm Absolutely, Craig. A very special day in our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers go out to those who lost loved ones on September 11th. Trey DeCarlo set to kick it away. Ryan Gilbert. 
Johnny Avery back for Houston. DeCarlo gets every bit into this one, goes out of the end zone. Houston will have their first possession, first and ten from their own 20-yard line. This Houston offense is unusual. We may see wishbones. We may see five wide receivers, and it's led by sophomore Kevin Cobb. He grew up in the system as he played high school football at Stephenville. That's where Art Bryles was a coach, so he knows the system. Art Bryles instituted the system, and even though he left, the system lived on. That's why Kevin Cobb was able to make, a, make an easy transition from high school to college last year. He was the best freshman quarterback in NCAA football last season. Absolutely outstanding. Battle and Shermer in the backfield now for Houston. Oklahoma already changing up their defense. Three wide receiver set. They give it to Battle. He is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Dusty Dvorak on the stop. Let's take a look at our U.S. Army of one starting lineup. The rest of this Houston Cougar offense. Only one senior on that offensive line with three new starters. Phil Hawkins at left tackle is the elder statesman. And in the wide receiver court, keep an eye on Vincent Marshall. He is the most explosive wide receiver. And quite frankly, he has to play big today. Cobb's going to go with five wide receivers. And a tackle split all the way out to the top. Phil Hawkins is split Right out. there. That's Phil Hawkins, the tackle. We told you it would be unusual. They swing it out. Penalty flag is thrown. Marshall is stacked up. Gets to the 21-yard line. This Oklahoma defense, number three nationally last year on D, even though they lost some key players, this defense may not lose a step for the Sooner team, which we've already seen tonight. On the line, four seniors, Jackson, Magruder, Dvorak, and Cody. These guys are solid. Linebacker, Lance Mitchell, injured, missed most of last year. He's back, leads a very athletic group. And in the secondary, Dante Nicholson, Big 12 defensor, newcomer of the year last season. Well, they blew off the flag. You mentioned unusual, and they've done that already. And we just saw the tackle split wide with a bunch a set of receivers. Let's see if they come with here. Once again, spreading them out. Johnny Avery wide on the right, four wide receivers set. Now it's an empty backfield. Cobb fakes, throws across the middle, wide open. Kendall Bryles, the coach's son. He's to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, and he's dragged out at the 15-yard line. Art Bryles' son, Kendall Bryles, the transfer from the University of Texas with the reception and the run. You mentioned unusual formations and Houston trying to spread out Oklahoma's defense. Mission accomplished on the last play. Kendall Piles ran freely into the secondary with no one covering him. A little celebration by the quarterback there. We told you this offense was unusual. Shermer and Battle in the backfield. On the ground, they don't get anything. Art Riles, this team, Art in his second year at the University of Houston, had trouble running the ball versus Rice. Only had eight yards on 32 carries. You can see what he did in his first season. And you have to talk about Art Bryles. You have to talk about the fact he is one of the most successful coaches in high school football in the state of Texas. Talk about four state championships at Stephenville High School, including back-to-back -back ones in the 90s before he moved on to college coaching. Four wide receivers. Now Cobb will go from the shotgun. Keeps it looking, scrambling. The Sooners in pursuit, and he's going to be run out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Loss of about three on the play. Lance Mitchell, the senior out of San Francisco, California, coming up to make the stop. What happened on this play that helped Oklahoma as opposed to the one where Kendall Bryles broke free, as you see Lance Mitchell fight off the blocker and knock Kevin Cobb out of bounds, is that Oklahoma State sound in their defensive alignment. No one busted a coverage. That didn't allow any free receivers for Houston. Allowed Oklahoma to make a nice play on defense. This is a team that put up almost 460 yards a game last year. They were struck last week by Rice, said they wanted to simplify things. Cobb goes in motion, gets the snap, throws inside the 10. Down to about the eight-yard line. Leonard Gibson on the reception. Gibson, the sophomore out of Corsicana, Texas. Pick up of 11 on the play. 
the quarterback here, Kevin Cobb. On the snap, he's almost moving as if it's almost, see how he's moving before the snap? Almost like the old single wing. Allowed him to get out to the corner quicker, set his feet and fire the pass. Tougher for a right-handed quarterback moving to his left to be accurate. That little hop step before the snap, that allowed Kevin Cobb to set his feet and deliver a nice ball. Well, it's fourth down. We'll call it about one, and I think Houston may be calling a timeout, and Art Browse wants to talk about it. Kevin Cobb, just a sophomore, leads Houston on their first possession all the way down to about the six-yard line. We're in Norman, Oklahoma, the Cougars and the Sooners, and Houston's knocking on the door. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. Fourth down and one for the Houston Cougars on the Sooner six-yard line. Cougars one for two on fourth down tries this year. I don't think they run it here. I think they fake it and boot. And we have flags. Oklahoma jump, Houston jump. Let the men in the striped jersey sort it out. Referee is Drew George tonight. I think it may be against Oklahoma. That'll be a first down. Prior to the snap, defense in the neutral zone making contact, offsides, number 94. Result, five yards, result of the play is a first down. Dusty Dvorak, the culprit. Quickly, do you like the fact they're giving the players numbers? Oh, I love the fact that they're giving the players numbers. It's about the only sport where you didn't know who committed the foul, and each time it happened, the first thing the head coach was asking was, who was it on? Who was it on? So they could teach that person to do the right thing later. I think it's a great move. There's Bo Pelini. Former interim head coach in Nebraska, now the co-defensive coordinator. First and goal for Houston, straight ahead, left side. Jackie Battle waiting for the officials to give the signal. Still haven't done it. And I think they're going to mark it just a tad short. No, touchdown! Bob Stoops is stunned. The big play, the 63-yard pass from Cobb to Kendall Bryle. They end up with a one-yard or a couple-yard run. Coming right at you over the right side. They got a little bit lower, knocking Lance Mitchell, number 10, back. Their star, their strong linebacker, the middle linebacker for Oklahoma. And Battle powers his way into the end zone. I think it was that second effort when he just rolled over the top because his knee never touched. The extra point by Dustin Bell is good. 68 consecutive PATs for the senior out of Houston, Texas, Jersey Village High School. And the Oklahoma Sooners have taken their fall behind 7-0. 80 yards, 3 minutes and 16 seconds, and Bob Stoops is letting his players know about it. Not real happy. Two critical mistakes for Oklahoma. First, the busted coverage on Kendall Bryles' catch and run, and then giving them the first down on fourth and short when they jumped into the neutral zone before Jackie Battle, the 250-pound tailback, battles his way into the end zone for the initial score of the evening. Fans, this telecast is available with Spanish translation via the SAP button on your remote control. Well, Bob Stoops, 17-0 in the month of September. And he knows that they just got a big-time wake-up call there, Charles. And most teams, when you look at a game such as this where you're a prohibitive favorite like an Oklahoma is, a lot of people would say, well, he's going to have a tough time getting his team up. But Bob Stoops has really never had that issue. In games that they should win, they've taken care of business. We'll find out now whether they're truly up for the game or if they came in flat tonight. Well, you can see the other side completely different. This is a team that our Browse told us last night got their nose bloodied last week against Rice. They came in with high expectations and they were stopped. And he said, we just have to work hard. Last week did not make or break our season. Tonight's a whole new night, and he's absolutely right. And what did he say? This is a chance for us to go to Norman, Oklahoma, and get our self-respect back. Called it a Listerine game last week. Wash your mouth out of that one, and let's move on. Three men are back. Oklahoma wanted to go with one man deep. And it's going to be Jawan Rankins at the 15. Steps up. Has some running room. Up to the 40. Still on his feet to the outside. Down to the 35 yard line. Gerard Daniels makes the stop. That's how you answer a long drive by Houston.
great return because Jawan Rankins made sure that he used his blocking effectively. Stop and start, stutter steps, finding the holes, kept picking up blocks because he kept setting them up. A 56-yard return, setting up Oklahoma in great field position to start their first drive. That's his first return of the year, and Oklahoma takes over, first and 10. Ball on the Houston 36-yard line. There's the emotion Bob Stoops was looking for. Keep it on the ground. Juan Jones stacked up, loses a couple on the play for that OU offense. Pretty vanilla offense last week by Oklahoma, but don't kid yourself, my friends. They have all the tools. Quarterback Jason White, he is healthier than he has been in years. Now he can work out seven straight days. Charles will not take a couple of days off. Last year, he always had to take time off to rest his aching knees and, and also other injuries he had. He had those cleaned up in the offseason. Penalty it was unsportsmanlike on both teams. Offsetting penalties, it'll be second down. Let things get a little chippy here early on. Think the team, both teams fortunate the trash talking won't be tolerated by the officials in this ball game. Both teams fortunate that it canceled out, didn't hurt either one of them. They have to get a rain on their emotions and just go play a little football now. Second down and 10. Keep it on the ground. Over the left side, nothing going on. Juwan Jones on the run again. Let's take a look at the rest of that offense on the line. The right tackle is Jamal Brown, the senior out of Lawton, Oklahoma, leads a very experienced offensive line. And the best wide receiving core in college football is led by Mark Clayton. He's on the verge of becoming the all-time leading receiver in Oklahoma history. They go six deep in the wide receivers, three deep, possibly four deep at the tailback spot. And there's their All-American, Mark Clayton, to the top of the screen in the slot position where he's oh so dangerous. Bubba Moses in motion, holds up. High snap, White pulls it down. This is the mobility he didn't have last year. Scrambling and looking, has a man streaking to the end zone, throws it up for a grab, caught at the one-yard line, Mark Clayton. White came onto the field. We were talking about how his mobility has been increased due to off-season surgery and a chance to get stronger. All his knees are healthy, and this is the end result. He can move around in the pocket, something he could not do last year. Extended the life of the play, and it turned into a huge one for the Oklahoma Sooners. Now this is where our Bryle said they have to limit Oklahoma in the red zone, and it is very difficult. They stack it up with a couple of tight ends from the I formation. Straight ahead running, Keywon Jones, touchdown, Oklahoma. Keywon Jones, second rushing touchdown of the year. Last week he had 148 yards on 32 carries. The most carries and the most yards he said. He said, you got to go back a long time to find out if I ever did that before. We're talking high school. <laughs> That's right. And he scores tonight. The Carlo for the extra point. Had a 59 straight PAT streak snap last week versus Bowling Green. A former walk-on, the sophomore out of Carrollton, Texas. Ties it up. 36 yards. Took him four plays. Just over 145. And it the Keywan Jones touchdown. We are tied at seven with 9.45 in the first. Welcome back to college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday. We are still in the first quarter. And the Oklahoma Sooners and the Houston Cougars tied up at seven. Along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager, I'm Rob Thulin. Welcome you back to Oklahoma. The number two team in the country. And DeCarlo will kick it away. We have had fireworks in <laughs> just under six minutes, just about what we thought it would be like. After Houston's first drive, we wondered whether Oklahoma might be a little flat tonight, but the offense answered back quickly. I think both teams are in this ball game early. Now it's been eight years since Houston knocked off a rank opponent. That was back in 96 when they brought it with Southern Mississippi. 
The Carlos kick again, five yards deep. Start to bring it out. Now you're going to have to bring it out. And Oklahoma is right there at the 15 you're doing. Well, let's take a look at Houston's last drive where they put the first seven on the board, Charles. The big play, a broken coverage in the secondary by Oklahoma allowed Kendall Bryles to run free. And then the second critical mistake, jumping off sides on fourth and one, gave Houston a, an automatic first down, and then Jackie Battle punched it in for the initial score of the night. Art Bryles very coy about what he was going to do in this ball game tonight. <laughs> because and we'll tell you a little bit more about it later, but this is the most unusual offense that the two of us have ever seen. Now they look like they're not sure where they want to go. They are confused. And they'll keep it on the ground running the football. Battle is stacked up immediately. And this is a team that Art Bryles, he wants balance. He wants equal pass, equal uh, run. And a lot of people think this is a pass-happy offense, and it really isn't. Oklahoma, they're well, first. They got a sideline warning, which is becoming common now. But this is a balanced offense, believe it or not. And Art Bryles came from Texas Tech, which is truly throw, throw, throw. First. And they also gave a sideline warning to Houston. Both teams are very emotional tonight and fired up and are into this game early. So they need to just move back, let the game come to them a little bit more. But Art Riles got, has his team going. But they, you're right, Ron. Balance is the watchword of the Houston offense. They want to run it as much as they want to throw it. And they've rushed six times. They only have four yards. Cobb this time steps up in the pocket, right down the middle, pass tip, incomplete. Almost intercepted and almost caught. Let's send it back to Atlanta. Here's Ernie Johnson. All the highlights on the Phillies halftime report. Third down. Got from the shotgun. Oklahoma playing disciplined defense and it pays off. At the 14 by Dan Cody. Great example there, Charles, of Dan Cody just holding his position and playing disciplined defense. What he did was he down the line of scrimmage flat and he took away the inside watch Kendall Browse number five in white trying to get the shovel pass but Dan Cody was in position to take that away and then still stayed on his feet and took away the quarterback's running lane An excellent play by the preseason All-American number 80 Dan Cody loss of three on the play Justin Laird one of two punters that Houston used last week they had a punt block versus Rice they had some problems in this area Kick into one of the most dangerous in the country. Antonio Perkins calls the fair catch, but he's in Houston territory. Only 34 yards on the kick. Great field position for the Sooners. But we are tied in Norman. 8.29 left in the first. Houston and Oklahoma tied at seven. And our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. Well, following that long pass to Mark Clayton from Jason White, White went over 5,000 yards, total yards for his career. Quite an accomplishment when you consider that he only had played really four games prior to last season. How the big yardage last season in his Heisman Trophy campaign. Maybe Ronald. Jones. Ronald puts the block. Jones keeps the ball. Gets up to the 47. Joe Clay, the senior out of Ada, Oklahoma, on the stop. Let's take a look at that Houston defense. They've had a short week. They've had to go from the triple option of Rice last week to OU's multiple options this week. And on the defensive line, the man who just made the tackle, Joe Clay from San Angelo, Texas, is solid and tough. Fastest linebacking core in Conference USA, Lance Everson, led the team in tackles last year in the secondary. They got a track guy, a former quarterback, a former walk-on. But Stanford route is the man back there. White from the shotgun throws out of the flat. Looking. Or to Clayton, I should say. Pass complete. Well, people's on the reception. We saw right there also Jason White. Last year, he had problems pushing off from behind center. He had problems moving around in the pocket. We've already seen his mobility, but just there, he seemed a little lighter on his feet. And that's allowed Oklahoma to put back into the playbook more plays where he's under center and can get away from center and hand the ball off. Last year's knees hurt so much, they had him in the shotgun most of the time in order for him to get more, more distance between the center and the defensive line and throw the football. Flag. Much has been written about Jason White going under center, staying in the gun. Let's listen in on the penalty. 
prior to the snap, false start, number 50, repeat third down. Well, Vince Carter, the culprit, much was made about that. But what Bob Stoops and what offensive coordinators and everybody wants, they want balance as far as run and pass, not necessarily under center and in, in, in the gun. No matter what formation they come out in, Oklahoma truly wants to get the 50-50 ratio pass to run. They're down in seven from the 45 for Oklahoma. James Moses, the tight end, joins White in the backfield. Here comes the pressure. White throws it out of the flat. First down, Oklahoma to Clayton. Clayton with his second reception of the night, and again, you're seeing why this young man is about to become the all-time leading receiver in Oklahoma history. Set a slew of records last year. Watch Mark Clayton. He's going to just cross, uh, cross on the field underneath, catch the ball, and that takes him to the sideline. If Jason White is able to get the ball to his outside, he has more room to run, but he had to make a difficult catch, turning back to the inside. Made the catch, but that allowed Houston to drag him down after a nice game. First down for Oklahoma. On the ground, T.Y. Jones, big hole, looking for the goal post. Inside the 10, the market at the seven-yard line. Courtney Brooks, the senior out of Houston, Texas, makes the touchdown saving tackle. Excellent blocking up front by Oklahoma's offensive line and then downfield coming into your picture. Number 81, Brandon Jones, right there. Knocking down number eight, Stanford Routes. It's to the left of your screen. That allowed Kiwan Jones to get downfield for big yardage. Good job by number 81, Brandon Jones. You can't just run, run patterns as a receiver. You have to be willing to put your body out there and block people. First and goal now for the Sooners. Ball is at the seven yard line. Jones. Inside the five, still barreling down. You know, when we looked at Keywon Jones Thursday in practice and also yesterday, the first thing that stands out is he's added some muscle weight, and he's a lot livelier, it seems like, on his feet. He's picked up some speed. And what we've learned from the coaching staff, we look at the vitals of Keywon Jones, is that he had a cast on his hand most of the spring last year, wasn't able to lift, went into the season last year, not as strong as he normally is. This year, able to lift from day one, and the results are evident. Second down and goal from the two. Goes again. Left side, stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Good job by that Houston defense. Markway Love, Cade Lane coming in. We have another penalty flag thrown. Markway Love, one of the outstanding young players on that Houston defense, just a sophomore, thrown into the fray last year as a true freshman out of Fort Worth Crawley High School. And the coaching staff from Oklahoma said, at 99, he's a load. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's a I big young it. man. Only his seventh start. Had a great bowl game. A couple of sacks, four tackles for a loss. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number eight, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Canford route, Matt Browns doesn't like that. Now, okay, gentlemen, time to get it in check. Mm -hmm. We've mentioned the chippy play already. The emotion should be subsiding a little bit. Now it's just play football. All you're doing is hurting your ball club, Stanford route. You know, and the margin of error for Houston is so slim anyway. And our Browse wants to shorten the game. He wants to take away a lot of the intangible things. That doesn't help. Not at all. His defense is making a good showing right now. They just need to keep up the effort. Runnels and Jones in the backfield. On first and goal, T.Y. Jones straight ahead. Touchdown, Oklahoma. <laughs> now, our Browns defense last year was much maligned. The offense put up a lot of numbers, but so did their opponents. This year, they want to be a little more physical, a little tougher on the defensive side of the football. But when you put your defense on the field with Oklahoma with the ball in your territory, you're putting your defense in their back to the wall. Very difficult, and it traces back to the kickoff return when they should have kneeled, knelt in the end zone, brought it out, we tackled inside the 15, set up great field position for the Oklahoma drive. Carlos at the point, through to the mark. Ewan Jones already tonight with a couple of touchdowns, and he has given Oklahoma the lead here in quarter number one, wearing the number of Billy Sims. Starting to run a little bit like him. Sooners lead at 14 to 7.
go. You bring up a good point, Charles, about the defense. But one thing that our Browns was, was talking to us about yesterday, and, and also defensive coordinator Rod Harris of Houston says, it doesn't matter where they put us. Our job is to get the ball back. They didn't make any excuses, but you still have to look at it from a realistic standpoint. I mentioned it just a minute ago. The kickoff return. Should have knelt in the end zone. He was too deep. The return man was. He brought it out. Tackled inside the 15. Oklahoma's defense smothered Houston's offense on the exchange of punts when they punted the football. Great field position for the Sooner offense. And you mentioned earlier, Ron, a short week for Houston. They played Sunday night against Rice. Had to turn around and get here to Oklahoma. Changes your preparation, and as you mentioned, going from a wishbone off attack against Rice to Oklahoma's multiple attack, you need all the days you can get. A short week has got help. Carlos set to kick it away. Here's a good look at Donnie Avery, the redshirt freshman out of Houston, Texas. He is joined by Ryan Gilbert. This time to Carlos, not going to have anybody return it. First and 10 from their own 20. Up tonight, scholar athletes of the game are brought to you by TIAA Prep Financial Services for the greater good. How about Bossler with a 3.21 and Dusty Dvorak of Oklahoma with a 3.31. Business management majors, both out of Texas, both outstanding players and tremendous students, Charles. You know, I think if you, me, and Sage triple team one of those GPAs, we might approach <laughs> it. You know, <laughs> with, with ours. Not a shot. <laughs> Dvorak, the OU nominee for the National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete Award this year. Both very intelligent young men who can play a great brand of football. Ryan Gilbert now in the backfield, his first carry, the former transfer from LSU. Only his second carry of the year. This Alexander coming up to make the stop. Now, Anthony Evans and Jackie Battle are the main two running backs for this Houston attack, but you have to throw this Ryan Gilbert into the fray. Obviously, has some talent, went to LSU, and they may use all three of these guys tonight. I think that they will because Evans, Anthony Evans, had a bad calf to start the ball game. Another big game, this time to Vincent Marshall. Brandon Middleton was the big receiver last year for Houston. They said, we need Marshall to step up in order for us to be successful in our passing game. We mentioned how Houston wants to get, get things going and spread them out. Look at the splits between offensive linemen. They're trying to widen out the Oklahoma defense and take advantage of the gaps. And that's exactly what they're doing on this drive. And on that play, Vincent Marshall, number 17, totally uncovered until he caught the ball. Look at the 22 on the play, first and 10, just over midfield. Nothing doing. That Oklahoma defense is stout against the run. We saw in that pass play, though, just a moment ago, to Vincent Marshall. We saw Clint Ingram, number 44 for Oklahoma. Oh, fumble! And Oklahoma has it. Well, that came a little bit late. It looked like Dusty Dvorak may have come up with a ball, and Art Brown sees his team with another mistake. Partner Matt, quote you. Yeah. The margin for error for Houston is very slim. They can't afford these types of errors. Jackie Battle, number 20, the ball stripped right there. Looked like number 92, Larry Bird, excuse me, excuse me, number 42, Rufus Alexander, who played a great game against Bowling Green last week, has picked right up where he left off, stripped the ball out. Number 94, Dusty Dvorak. And how about that mascara? I'm telling you, <laughs> plays just like it. Dvorak recovers the fumble and gives us a look. It is pretty. Back on offense, they've been able to move the ball successfully. A little flea flicker to Mark Bradley. Danny Bradley's son. Bradley's got a convoy. Kiss him goodbye. Sooner fans are going to be happy. Bob Stoops is not going to be happy. We have a couple of penalty flags now. One of them will be against Mark Bradley for diving into the end zone when he didn't have to. And that was a point of contention with the officials. And Charles, we spent some time with these guys in July. They said, we are going to call that. And they're not going to allow that diving into the end zone when you don't need to anymore. There are about 23 different terms under the unsportsmanlike conduct section this year in the rule book. 
And frankly, if they call him for diving in the end zone, I'm going to tell you now, I don't like that rule being in, in effect, Ron, and I'll tell you why after we get the call. I don't like it at all because <laughs> it's tough to tell sometimes if you're going to be tackled or not. Yeah. Two flags on the play. The first play is against the University of Houston for sideline interference. That penalty is refused. Score. The second flag is no flag. And that's a good job. They picked it up. That's a good job because at the end of the run, Mark Bradley was being pressured by a Houston mm -hmm. defender. And I know they're saying they think it's showboating when a guy dives into the end zone when no one's around. But let me tell you something. You know what will stop you from doing that? Land on your shoulder the wrong way once, get hurt, and not be able to play. You'll quit doing it in a hurry. That's just one rule they've added I don't think that they need. 51 yards on the touchdown to Carlo with the extra point. Mark Bradley, the senior out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Dad was a quarterback here. Danny Bradley, watch this. And watch the razzle-dazzle because last year, Mark Bradley on an end around through a 17-yard touchdown pass against Oklahoma State. This time, it's a pure run all the way. See that? Stanford route number eight tripped him up at the end of the play as he was diving for the end zone. That's why that flag needed to be picked up. He was within distance to try and make a play on him. Good job by the officials picking up the flag. Excellent play by Oklahoma, showing the a little bit more of the playbook than they did against Bowling Green and letting their future opponents know that the playbook has been expanded. Well, it's funny because we were talking to uh, uh, Chuck Long and Bob about it yesterday and how much have you shown? They said not much because we know we've got a lot of games. There's Chuck Long, one of the outstanding offensive coordinators in college football, and he is going to be a head coach on Division One level in a very near time, I am sure. He's done, but, a, done a terrific job, and the thing I like about Chuck Long He's a tremendous communicator with his players. They know exactly what they're supposed to do, and they know exactly where he stands on everything. So there's no gray area. He relates to them well, but they know exactly where the lines are in, it, in everything that they do. Now, if you're the Houston Cougars, you are struck. You had a 7-0 lead. You put together a great opening drive, highlighted by a 63-yard toss and run from Cobb to Bryles, and now Oklahoma is answered with 21 points. Carlos kick is going to be short. Gilbert up over the 15 to about the 17 yard line. Let's go down to the field and Craig Sager sinks. Well, underneath the Oklahoma jerseys, the players are wearing t-shirts with one word, finish. That speaks volumes about what this team hopes to accomplish this year, and that is the national championship in the FedEx Orange Bowl. A year ago, they started out 12-0, but did not finish strong, losing the Big 12 championship to K-State and also the Sugar Bowl to LSU. This year, unfinished business. The coaching staff made sure the equipment manager, Greg Tipton, had shirts of this sign at every player's locker. They wear them to every practice and also in the game tonight. And that's all the players talk about is finishing. Gilbert stacked up, nothing doing. Dante Nicholson, the senior out of Ramona, California, coming up to make the stop. And Ron, to follow up on what Craig reported about the word finish, it's not just the T-shirt underneath the, underneath the jersey, it's how they do drills. Every drill that they finish with, it's a finished technique, finished term. Everyone finished the drill, completed every single time. They felt they didn't do that last year, they plan to do it this season. Now we have three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Cobb with five to snap. Now this is not a hurry up by Houston either. Sooner show and blitz. That's too much time, the penalty flag. I think they needed to hurry a little bit more there, but it's not a hurry up. It's Brent Venables, the, the, the co-defensive coordinator, shows his emotion this evening. Dead ball, delay, University of Houston, five-yard penalty, second down. Art Bryles talking to his troops now, trying to get the play call in to Kevin Cobb, but they're not huddling very often, and when they do huddle, they try and come out of it, get up to the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma, notice, on defense, has plenty of time to adjust. They're not coming to the line of scrimmage and bam, running a play. They're surveying the defense and trying to get the best option available. Now they try a little reverse of their own. Vincent Marshall hogtied at the 20-yard line by Brodney Poole, probably the best athlete on this Sooner defense, just a sophomore out of Westbury High School in Houston. Wow. 
Now you got to say there's a lot of guys from Houston that play for the Sooners. <laughs> and I'm sure there's some rivalries going on down there. A little trickery. Let's, let me show you what speed does for you. Because this play had the ability to pop big for, by Vincent Marshall. But Rodney Poole just simply ran him down. Art Riles was calling for a face mask. I didn't see it there. It looked like a good tackle to me. Almost another fumble. You know, they actually had him outflanked there, Ron. Vincent Marshall had the corner. Right. But Rodney Poole simply ran him down. Well, they're actually calling that a pass, the official score, and that'll probably be reviewed after the game. It's like a shovel pass behind the line of scrimmage. Third down and six. Cobb's going to keep it. Gets up to about the 24-yard line. May have picked up one on the play. Jonathan Jackson, the senior out of North Shore High School in Houston, Texas, on the stop. And now Houston's going to be forced to kick it away again. We'll talk more about that Houston offense because, to be honest with you, it's difficult to explain. 2.30 to play in quarter number one. It's an offense that really struggled in its opener. They used to averaging well over 400 yards per game, and Rice really shut them down last week. Antonio Perkins standing at his 37-yard line. Justin Laird to kick it away, a line drive kick. Perkins backs up to the 30. Can't get away from the first man down. Good coverage by the Houston Cougars. Just a reminder, our next telecast will be next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern as the Texas A&M Aggies host the Clemson Tigers. Then on the 25th, we'll make our way up to Palo Alto and USC, the number one team in the country, taking on Stanford. Then October 2nd, beginning at 7 o'clock Eastern, we will have a doubleheader, Big 12 and Pac-10. You'll get to see both right here, part of college football on TBS. A&M shutting out Wyoming today. Of course, Clemson playing Georgia Tech. Only he'll update us on all the scores on the Chili's halftime report, but big win for AM. They needed it. That they did, and they got it today. Adrian Peterson, the much heralded freshman, his first carry of the ball game. I'll tell you, this is a young man considered the top running back in the country last year. Averaged 11.7 yards a carry his senior year. People were saying, okay, how good is he? Comes in last year, gets 100 yards rushing, and now people are saying, whoa, we've got him. quite a find here in young Adrian Peterson. And 6.2 yards per carry, but his first carry tonight met with resistance. The defensive front for Houston is really playing a good game tonight, really stymieing Oklahoma as they try and get their run game going. A little play action and a bootleg. White tries to get it off in the flat, and J.D. Runnels can't get the hand on it. But again, there's the byproduct of Jason White being healthy. They've added some bootlegs. They've added the, some different little wrinkles in the offense that he couldn't do last year. And that play didn't work, but that doesn't mean it wasn't open. It was just a bad throw by Jason White, throwing it behind J.D. Runnels as he moved toward the sideline. But you mentioned the byproduct of him being healthy. Bootlegs, rollouts, able to move in the pocket a little bit, scramble when necessary. All of that helps your offense create big plays. Diversify the offense. Running down at a hook leg or a little play action, says Chuck Long. On third and ten, White straight back pressure. Now he's got a wide open field. Throws instead, wide open. Clayton again! Inside the 35, down to about the 32-yard line. Watch Jason White on this scramble. He approached the line of scrimmage as if to run and then move parallel so that he could throw. And then watch Mark Clayton. Senses that his quarterback is in trouble. The defense lets him go because they blocked in on the quarterback. He got behind him. Big play for Oklahoma. Three catches for 86 yards now for Mark Clayton. Did you mention Jason White's mobility yet? Yeah, I, I think we've seen it very well in this opening quarter. Keeping it on the ground. Peterson looking for something. May have picked up one on the play. You know, and Jason White, a lot of people were saying, well, wait a minute, why did I vote for him for the Heisman? This young man was extremely injured last year. But how about before that? 99, 2000, 2001, and then last year. The wrist, the big toe, had the knee scoped out. He was one hurting quarterback at the end of last season. Yeah, in the 2001, 2002, the ACLs for both knees. 
And last year, they never mentioned it, all the injuries he had down the stretch in the Big 12 championship game and the national championship game. This time they fake the reverse straight ahead handoff. And up goes to Adrian Peterson again. Ewan Jones got most of the carries here in the opening quarter, and that's going to do it for quarter number one in Oklahoma. The Houston Cougars take a 7-0 lead. Art Browse team was happy, but Oklahoma, the number two team in the country, answered with 21 points. Quarter number one is history, and the Sooners lead 21-7. Welcome back to college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday. And as we get set to start the second quarter, the Oklahoma Sooners, number two in the country, leading the Houston Cougars 21 to 7. We are in Norman, Oklahoma, an absolutely perfect evening. Crowd of well over 82,000. Every home game in the Bob Stoops era has been a sellout. Tonight's no different. Along with Charles Davis and Craig Saker, I'm Ron Thulin. The Sooners facing third down and five yards to go, falling about the 27 yard line. White looking, showing some patience, pass complete up to about the 21-yard line. Again, Mark Clayton, his fourth reception of the evening, picks up seven on the play. That should be good enough to move the chains. Good protection by the offensive line, good patience by Jason White, and excellent route running by Mark Clayton, getting past the first down line and catching it. Play selection, this is what Oklahoma told us they were going to do. They wanted to run the football. Thus far, 12 rushes, six passes, exactly what Oklahoma wanted to accomplish tonight. Peterson bounces to the outside, looks for the block, cuts inside of the 10-yard line, and the Sooners will have another first down. There's that burst of speed that they've been missing since Quentin Griffin was here, who, by the way, is going to start in the NFL tomorrow. And one of the criticisms out of running from the shotgun is that they, people say you can't get what they call downhill runs right at people, so similar to eye formation runs with the tailback. But on that play, do you see Jason White's footwork? Moving to the inside, Adrian Peterson came towards him and turned it so that it became a downhill run, similar to an eye formation play. And that's from our All-State. Good hands, Cam. You're in good hands with All-State. <laughs> now first and goal from the 10. Get down to the seven-yard line again. It is Peterson. Repeat same play from Chuck Long. Mm -hmm. so take a look at Bob Stoops again. Another downhill run from the gun formation. That guy there knows a little bit about coaching football, doesn't he? Yep. Remember when they were talking about, hey, he's, a, he's never been a head coach before and getting a program yeah, such as right. Oklahoma might be a bit much? Well, guess what? He should have had this job a long time ago. Look at that record. 31-1 and one at home, 17-0 and oh in September, <laughs> 2000 National Championship. I think he knows what he's doing. Ron Jones back in, Peterson out. White goes to Pater. Touchdown, Oklahoma, Travis Wilson. Deja vu for Art Bryles, thinking back to last year, because Oklahoma is making it look easy on offense. He's referring to Art Bryles' defense struggling last year, giving up big yardage and big points in a number of ball games. And right now, Oklahoma seems to be headed towards those types of numbers. And they're doing it quickly. Not taking a lot of time, but Carlos' extra point is good. Oklahoma Sooners averaging about 10 yards per play. And Travis Wilson gets the touchdown. Oklahoma leads 28 to 7. We're in the second. Welcome back to College Football Saturday on TBS. A sellout crowd in Norman, Oklahoma. And they love what they see. The Sooners lead at 21 to 28 to 7. 13-43 left in the second. Jason White, by the way, that was his 50th career touchdown pass. He's now just three short of Josh Heifel's record, who's now an assistant coach with the Sooners and has met a great deal to Jason White. And Josh Heifel finished second in the Heisman running. Well, Jason White won it, but Josh Heifel has a Big 12 and a national championship. That's what Jason White wants on his resume. Well, Carlo again into the end zone. Let's send it back to Atlanta. Ernie Johnson, not a good day for Kansas State. He, I don't want to be in the Big 12 North today. <laughs> they got frozen. Boom, boom, boom. And there's a fumble. Ball is loose, and I think Houston came down on it. You know, in last week's game against Rice, it seemed that this offensive line of Houston was out of sync. 
And they seem out of sync again tonight. Three brand new starters. They're replacing two guys last, who played last year were all Conference USA and are now in the pros. It takes a while for an offensive line to knit together and come together and know where each guy is and have all their responsibilities covered. Last week, gave up nine sacks, 14 tackles for loss, trying to do it now against one of the better defenses in the country. Got to keep it on the ground with butt heads at the 20-yard line. Jackie Battle just puts his head down and barrels forward. Sophomore out of Humble, Texas. He's a power runner, a tough kid. How about only seven, seven negative yards last year? That tells you how tough this young man is. Well, you saw why on that run he did not go down easily. Not very often in open field will one guy take him down with the tackle. It's going to take multiple players to get to Jackie Battle, the MVP of the Milwaukee Bowl last year for the Houston Cougars. 24 yards and three touchdowns in that game. Third down and nine for the Cougars. Two wide receivers to the right, now three to the left. Cobb being pressured, and he goes down. Larry Burdine, the sophomore out of Lawton, Oklahoma. First sack of the night for the Sooners. Houston gave up nine last week. And this is the first sack of the season for the Sooners. Last week against Bowling Green, a lot of ad-lib plays by the quarterback prevented the Sooners from getting a sack. Now they get the initial one of the year. You hear the defensive linemen talk all the time from Oklahoma. We want to play some conventional teams. Enough of this spread offense. They get rid of the football too fast. With the smash mouth football back. Laird standing on the goal line. Not a good kick, and Oklahoma's going to get great field position again. The Sooners have been working with a short field the whole night. And the punting woes continue for Houston. Only 27 yards on that kick. 11.43 to play in the second quarter. And the Sooners lead it by three touchdowns. College football on TBS brought to you by Kia Motors. Eight cars, one belief. Make every mile count. And Pioneer Pure Vision Plasma Displays, the purest color, the purest experience. Well, the Oklahoma Sooners have not lost a game before October 27, 1999. And right now at 11.43, left to play in quarter number two. They lead it 28-3. And what we're seeing also is a culmination of about three years working with this offensive line. Kevin White's been working with them on their blocking technique. And now we're seeing this evolution reap some rewards. They've been wanting to be tougher and more aggressive up front. And I think we're starting to see that much more consistently from the offensive line of Oklahoma. Peterson now in the backfield. White takes it. Looking up top across the middle. Going for it all. Throws. Caught. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Brandon Jones. Back-to-back -back touchdown passes by Jason White. The first one to Travis Wilson. This one, the big shot to Brandon Jones. Why? Because the running game has been put back into force by Oklahoma. Able to use play action now because the running game is a threat. The last two touchdowns, play action passes over the top. Oklahoma gets scores. Brandon Jones, the senior out of Texarkana, Texas. Carlos extra point is good. He's considered the big play receiver, the former draft pick of the New York Yankees and an outfielder with the Sooners. Comes up with again the big play. And he is the big play guy, especially at 6'3", 214. And off of play action, Jason White had all evening to survey the field, let Brandon Jones get downfield, and then hit him with the pass in the end zone as he goes to catch the football. A lot of big plays this evening by the Oklahoma Sooners. Jawan Rankins with a 56-yard kickoff return. And then Mark Clayton getting downfield when Jason White extended the life of the play with his legs. And Mark Bradley on the reverse takes it all the way into the end zone. And then here off of play action, look at the time Jason White has, able to set and deliver. And Brandon Jones hauls it in for another score for the Oklahoma Sooners. And you can see 11.4 wow. per play. My goodness gracious. Four receivers have had receptions for the Sooners. Clayton with four. Jones, Wilson, and Peters each with one. And Jason White now two away. 
Oh, from Josh Heupel's record for touchdown passes. Did this game start out just a tad shaky for Oklahoma? Uh, I don't remember. It's it, been a long it, time it, ago. it doesn't seem like oh, it now, it does it? But you remember how it started early, a broken coverage, jumping off sides on fourth down on defense. Houston scored first. But since then, <laughs> the Sooners have taken care of business. And the Carlos side winding in over Ender, midway into the end zone. Houston's going to take over again, first and 10 from their own 20. And again, they're not getting anything off the kickoffs. Their field position has been horrible. And the yeah, lack of field position against Oklahoma's defense, commonly known as a recipe for disaster. That's right. Well, this defense of Oklahoma lost three major award winners. Of course, Derek Strait, Tommy Harris, and Teddy Lehman. They were stung on the opening possession when Cobb hit Kendall Bryles, but since then, it has been nothing. Got to establish the run game. Battle. Straight ahead of running Rufus Alexander, the sophomore out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Rufus Alexander, what a great story for this young man. He came to Oklahoma because he said he wanted to be coached hard. Came out of high school, had a, a, a bit of trouble along the way. Mom and dad, brother. All having, their, all having their own private struggles, adopted by his high school coach, but he wanted a place that would offer structure, and as you said, a place that would coach him hard, he's getting all of that here in Norman. Second and five. Totally out of sync up front, the Houston Cougars. Mm -hmm. Dead ball, false start. Number 70, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Cougars struggled last week against Rice. We mentioned it before, gave up nine sacks against their quarterback. The offensive line and backs, of course, responsible for that. They also gave up 14 tackles for loss. Prior to their last drive of the game, about half of their plays have been negative or zero yardage plays. This is usually not the team that you get right against. The Oklahoma Sooners, very difficult task. And our brows are very realistic about that. Cobb being chased, and he is going to be tied up back at the eight-yard line. Let's go down to Craig Sager. He is with the man that Art Bryles credits part of this offense to. Sager. Just trying to bring the Houston football program back to national prominence, a position it held for 25 years under the leadership of Hall of Fame coach Bill Yeoman. And I know you coach very tight with Art Bryles, but... Tell us what you think so far with the score 35-7. Well, there's any question in my mind, Art and his group will get it done. What it is, they got to go through people like Oklahoma, Miami, uh, Tennessee. They got to play those kind of folks. Now, our guys haven't been used to that. And that sometimes has a very unsalutary effect on your, uh, what, 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 on your, on your frame of mind. Well, I don't care. We got to go through this. It has to be done. So I'm proud of the way Art is doing it. These kids will get, learn to be tough. Now then, before we lose our heads, Oklahoma can really run. They have great athletes, and that's fine. We have to play some great athletes, but it's just, you, it's a different world than, you know, what, if you're going to play the lesser bunch, it won't make you any better. In 1964, you revolutionized college football with a VRT option formation. Where did that idea come from? We fell into the triple option of the practice, and that's, that was the whole difference. When we had that, look out. Go ahead, Ron. C.A. Rucker, touchdown! I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have left it, but I'll tell you, now those are the kind of people that give you a chance of being real Those are great athletes with great enthusiasm, great purpose, and that's what has made the Oklahoma program what it is. It's the same thing. We have to get it our place. No difference. Well, Houston losing 41-7, but they hope to gain something from this game, and that is how to play tough with the big boys. Huh? All right, Craig Sager, and with that touchdown return, Perkins ties Wes Welker, the former Tech Red Raider, for career returns.
for a touchdown off the punt. Carlo, his leg is going to get tired. <laughs> 41 to 7 is our score. 8:54. Number eight for Antonio Perkins, who had four last year. And if you're going to try and punt it away from him and punt it out of bounds, you can't kick it low and quickly to him and not kick it out of bounds. If you give him a chance on a low punt like that, it's an easy return ball. And, Ron, I'd like to welcome the fourth member to our broadcast team, Coach Bill Yeoman. <laughs> he did a great job on the play-by-play -play of Antonio Perkins bringing it back. He was. Congratulations to Antonio Perkins. Ties the NCAA record by Wes Welker. He also holds the NCAA record for yards in a game, touchdowns in a game, touchdowns in the season. I tell you what, that is why he is an All-American, my friends. And do you know what they're saying on the Houston bench right now to the punter? Why did you kick to him? If we're telling you we want it out of bounds, you've got to get it out of bounds. You can't have it halfway. Halfway ends up getting us hurt. In this point, in this case, it gave up six points. Either kick it out of bounds yeah. <laughs> or learn to kick it 60 yards downfield. It's one or the other. Well, Avery back. Now let's see what Houston's made out of because they are down 42 to 7. They were up 7 nothing, and they have been shellacked since then. And I think our Bryles is obviously he's going to keep coaching. That's just the kind of person our Bryles is. But he's going to be watching these players now to see if they've got their bags packed and heading to the charter to go back to Houston or if they're going to try to fight through this. Great point, partner. Films will be graded on that scale. How will you handle adversity? Remember, they lost to Michigan 50 to 3 last year. But that was part of a five and one start for the Houston Cougars. Well, Bill Yeoman was the head coach of Houston from 62 to 86, 160 career wins, most in Houston history. How about four Southwest Conference titles? And he was 6-4 and 1 in the 11 bowl games. He was invented, obviously invented the Veer offense, inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2001. And Art Bryles played for him, and he just talked so highly of Coach Yeoman. Saw how well the beer worked there for Terry Elston diving into the end zone. Art Browse using many of those philosophies in his offense. Cobb has gone nowhere the last couple of series. This Oklahoma defensive line, Lynn Magruder, Dan Cody, Calvin Thibodeau, the whole group just swarming over that offensive line of Houston, and they look totally out of sync right now. Yeah, I saw Larry Burdine, number 92, crashing from his defensive end position. He has a high motor. One of those guys that really love to get out and run and play, and his play has continued to improve each and every game. They try to swing on out to the far side. Vincent Marshall still on his feet, looking for some running room, and now he's got it. Still on his feet, crosses the 50 to the 40, cuts back, and he is going to be dropped at the 37-yard line. Flag is down, and an Oklahoma player is down on the 30-yard line. Looks like the penalty is going to be against Houston. Shinoki Anyanagecha is down on the field at the 30. The very talented junior college transfer, the cornerback out of San Francisco Cali Community College. Offense, number two, five yards from the previous spot, repeat second down. Great individual effort negated by an illegal shift, illegal motion against number two, Donnie Avery. Not getting himself set. Vincent Marshall getting, getting a lot of that done on his own. And now it all comes back. Well, Anya to get you. Had some health problems coming out of junior college with a hamstring. He'll, he's down. We'll update his condition after this. 42 to 7. Oklahoma leading our first and 10 line is brought to you by Oklahoma Home Depot Stadium. along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager. We have had fireworks 810 left to play in the second and all the fireworks have been on the Sooner side second down and 15 now for Houston Kevin Cobb the sophomore out of Stephenville Texas he's getting the audibles from our on the sidelines he's not making that check himself he's getting it directly from his head coach Great right ahead running, Anthony Evans. Now we have to mention as he gets up to the 20 that, believe it or not, Houston does not have an offensive playbook. There is no physical playbook. We didn't believe anybody when they told us. <laughs> Coach Brown says, 
We tried, but it just got too complicated. They got to play board. Yes, and they put the board up in their big team meeting room and go over the plays that way with the players, teach them, and then go out and rep them up until they have them down. Whistles blow, incomplete pass. Ball was trapped right at the 22 yard line. Love Browse, cannot believe it. Watch it coming at you here, trying to go to Vincent Marshall on a bubble screen using two receivers in front. And the ball did bounce into his hands. He tried to get his hands underneath. Excellent call by the officials right on top of the play. Well, the last time they kicked, it was disaster. <laughs> two punters already this year. Yeah. And there you see Perkins standing back at his 45 yard line. Justin Laird on about the six. Good snap, Oklahoma peels back. A little bit better kick as Perkins backed up and let it go. Fans wanted him to get it as he gets down to the 23 yard line, a 57 yard punt for Laird, his best of the evening. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of Oklahoma, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the University of Oklahoma or the Big 12 Conference. Now, this is the worst field position the Sooners have had as Kevin Cobb and company haven't been able to move the football because Oklahoma's had the ball near or in Houston territory just about the whole football game. I think it's time to let the offensive line fire out and hit some people and try and get the yep. running game going. And they try the right side, nothing doing. You make a great point to us. Keywan Jones is stacked up already a couple of touchdowns tonight for Keywan Jones. Is that this is what is going to be the basis for this Oklahoma offense. You talked about at the top of the show. Looks like he's got a little cramp maybe. But they want to run now to set up the pass. Last year was the pass to set up the run. And they want to use this offensive line, the senior de senior dominated, been together nearly three years. And they said to the coaches last year, we lost our confidence in our edge a little bit because we passed so much. Let us fire out and hit some people. Here's an opportunity. Travis Wilson split wide to the left. Right a little play action again, a little hit pass caught at the 40-yard line. It is Will People still on his feet. Gets into Houston territory again. Peoples came in needing just 91 yards receiving to reach 1,000. He picked up a chunk there. That play was similar to the last touchdown pass that Jason White threw to Brandon Jones. It's a bootleg pass, and he comes out. He has three different levels of receiver running to him on the side. Watch, comes out to the bootleg. You have one short. There's Runnels 38, one medium, Peoples 29, and a third receiver deeper. A 28-yard gain for the Oklahoma Sooners. Peterson, left side, back, back inside, down to the 45-yard line. And what we've seen from these four receivers that have made receptions tonight, especially a guy like Mark Clayton, they can run after they catch the football. And they also are in sync with their quarterback because a couple of the plays have occurred when Jason White has had to move out of the pocket, and then the receivers have seen that happen and moved to open spaces and given him an open target and had him deliver the ball to them. Great job by the receivers, sensing when their quarterback's in trouble and finding an open space on the field. Second down and eight, Joe John Finley, the redshirt freshman tight end in motion. White, a little slip screen. The DJ Wolf, the true freshman, still on his feet. Scampers inside the 20, tiptoes low, stepped out of bounds. And we have a penalty flag also thrown. You know, we talk about Keywon Jones, we talk about Adrian Peterson. Let's not forget D.J. Wolf, the freshman out of Lawton Ike High School, Lawton, Oklahoma. They're trying to put together a package for that young man. What did Chuck Long tell us? He has wide receiver hands. That's right. So they want to use him in the pass game as a back out of the backfield, and on that play it worked. Hold it. Offense, number 50, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Result of the play is a first down. Vince Carter getting downfield, their offensive center. Second time we've heard his number called tonight. Mm -hmm. I think one time is a legal procedure. He's the guy who sets everything in motion, so it's not often that you get the center. That's right. <laughs> Causing that, and this time getting downfield, trying to throw a block. Got, Cole, got caught with the cloth in his hands. New season, Remington and Lombardi. Watch this. Great player, very cerebral. Calls the offensive line checks. First and 
10. Keeping it on the ground with D.J. Wolf. Skips a couple of tackles. Down to about the 25-yard line. Now, just a reminder to stick around. Our Chili's halftime reporter, Ernie Johnson, will catch you up on all of today's action, including Michigan Notre Dame highlights with a report from Todd Donahill and Mark Fine. Sits down with Texas A&M coach, Coach Fran. Big winner today over Wyoming, and of course we'll have them next week from College Station against Clemson. Seven o'clock Eastern time, right here on TBS. Much needed win for the Aggies. A bounce back after their poor performance against Utah. Adrian Peterson back in the lineup inside of four and a half to play here in quarter number two. Quick pass. Bradley slips the tackle, gets the first down. Gets inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. Bryant Brown, the junior out of Houston North Shore High School, showed some pretty good closing speed to bring down Bradley. They have so much confidence in their receivers out wide. Normally on this pass run, you throw it with someone out there trying to block. J.D. Runnels was trying to get there but could not. So it just became a one-on-one -on -one play for Mark Bradley. And he was the victor in terms of catching the ball, making the move, and getting downfield for a first down. Bradley really hit third since last year, and you can see that the total yards, Oklahoma better than three times as many as Houston. And they add to it. Spin move by Peterson. Gets inside the 10. <laughs> Down to about the seven yard line. That had to feel good for the offensive line of Oklahoma. I saw number 55, Jamal Brown, as we look at head coach Bob Stoops observing the action. Their all American offensive lineman only gave up one sack last year, and he's disputing that one. <laughs> he's saying, hey, yeah. Jason called clock play, spike it. <laughs> I thought he was spiking it, and then he. That's why he got sacked. I don't want that on my record. <laughs> Inside of three and a half. Oklahoma trying to add to an already big lead. On the ground, Peterson, first down, looking for Peter. Touchdown for the Frenchman. Second touchdown run as a Sooner, Adrian Peterson. This is one, watch Kelvin Shashan, number 70, into your screen. He lays the block there. But they say a lot of the great backs don't just run with their feet, they run with their eyes. Adrian Peterson sees where the play is designed to go, notices where the hole is back opposite, makes the cut, and gets into the end zone. Great vision for such a youngster. And to Carlo, add another one. Have to ice down his left leg at halftime. So, so he had shin splints coming <laughs> into this. No, I don't think it's bothering him now. Now the Sooners are making it methodical on offense. Adrian Peterson, the freshman, and the Sooners lead 49 7. Houston has lost six straight to teams from the Big 12. Their last team, last win versus a team in the Big 12 was way back in 88. They beat Missouri, of course. Tigers at the time were in the, in the Big 8. And Art Browse in his second year, and he knew that this Oklahoma team was very powerful. He accepted that fact. He just wanted his guys to come in to, and compete. We've seen him continue to run the football even though they're down by a lot. Is he trying to make a point here with his team? I think what he's trying to do is just work on his offense, even though things aren't going well. He knows he's not going to get all this back in one big play and one chunk, and he has a lot of season left. Remember, they can still win Conference USA. So you don't abandon all your goals because of two bad games. Ernie Johnson, you're standing by with the Chili's halftime report. What do you have for it? Thank you, DJ. Looking forward to that as Houston takes over. First and 10 again, their own 20-yard line. Cobb to Bryles. Bryles puts down the shoulder. It's close to the first down. Kendall Bryles, the son of Coach Art Bryles, he is a junior transfer, was playing safety at the University of Texas. And when he told his dad, when his dad got the job at Houston, he says, I'm coming with you. And his dad says, I don't think that's a good idea. You stay with Coach Brown up there at the, in Austin. He thought Kendall had a great situation, was getting a lot of playing time as a safety. And he said, I, get, I didn't get into this business to coach my son. <laughs> it's difficult. Jackie Battle. Being pulled off the pack. Brandon Shelby getting a hand in there. Getting back to Kendall Bryles. Here was a high school quarterback. He was a class 4A player of the year, two straight years. His junior year, he led his team to a 16 0 record at Stephenville and had a great future and decides to go to Austin. But boy, his dad said, It's great to have him here, but you know, I just want him to be successful. 
And he says he does his best. He says he actually just blocks it all out, but he's there and treats him as any other player. But he really thought he had a great situation at Texas. First down and 10 now for the Cougars. Cobb scrambling, throws across his body, passes complete up to the 45-yard line. Gets it to Mark Hopkins, the big wide receiver out of Houston North Shore. Second uh, reception since last year. Pick up a 15 on the play. Use the word big when you talk about Mark Hopkins at 6'4", 220. Houston even has a position called the big slot position. Where they use bigger guys in the slot trying to run routes over the middle. Cobb's quick looking pass caught the drop immediately. What a hit by Perkins on Perry McDaniel, the redshirt freshman out of Lubbock. Great read by Antonio Perkins, who wants to be known for more than his punt return ability. He wants to be known as an excellent corner. He came from the wide corner, came inside, read the play, and put the hit on. Second down and five. Closing in on two minutes to play here in quarter number two. It has been all Oklahoma following that opening score by Houston. On the ground and big number 94 for the Oklahoma Sooners, Dusty Dvorak comes up with a stop. And Lynn Magruder, number 96, with the initial hit. Slowed him up just enough for number 94, Dusty Dvorak. He's on just about everyone's preseason All-America list to finish him off. Hard to gain yardage running inside on the big Oklahoma defensive line. Third down and seven now for the Cougars. Another check coming from the bench from Art Bryles to Kevin Cobb. Transmitted to the team. Five to snap. Cobb looks the quick pass is tipped and it's incomplete. Rufus Alexander, the sophomore, got the hand on it from that linebacker spot. Now the crowd getting into Rufus Alexander. He made a name for himself last week. He was all over the field. Coaches said he didn't play a perfect game. He had some alignment problems, but they liked his energy and the way he was aggressive on the field. Alignment problems you can correct. That's right. Hard to correct lack of aggressiveness or enthusiasm. They didn't have that issue at all with Rufus Alexander. And Oklahoma is going to take a timeout with 1.15 to play in the half. And a big lead at 49 to 7. Rivals.com is your football recruiting source. We will be the stars of tomorrow. Check out Rivals.com and find out today. Yeah, they're already talking about who's going to be big next year. All the Sooners had Rivals.com studs and Adrian Peterson and DJ Wolf. Our Bryles wants to have those studs come to Houston. Here we go, the Cougars offense. Look at this, Ron. 80 total yards in the first drive of the ball game that resulted in their touchdown. Since then, 51 total yards. It's almost as if a switch was clicked on for the Oklahoma Sooners, <laughs> and they decided right. to shut everything else down from that point on. Well, they've really kicked it up a notch defensively, which has been the key, but offensively, they've been clicking, and Bo Pelini, Kind of an opposite type personality of Brett Venables, and there's been much written about these two relationships. Everybody's saying they'll never get along. These two guys have one of the best relationships I've seen in assistant coaches. And you can't really fake chemistry, and those two have it. We noticed it in our meetings with them on Friday, the way they talked about each other and how they work together. A great pairing for the Oklahoma defense. Houston's going to go for it on fourth and seven. A little reverse. Marshall tries to get to the outside, dives for the first down, and he will be short. Be about three yards short. Dante Nicholson coming up to really make the first hit on him. It's about the fourth time we've seen this play. Kevin Cobb, the quarterback, will come in motion a little bit, take the direct snap from the center, and then he tosses it back inside to, to Vincent Marshall, the wide receiver running reverse the other way. I think there's some question about whether that's a handoff or a forward pass. It's almost like a shovel pass behind the line of scrimmage. So I think it goes on Kevin Cobb's record as a forward pass completed. There's Vincent Marshall, the wide receiver, down after the end of that play. Boy, they can't afford to lose him because he is their big play man from the wide receiver spot. But the Sooners take over. First and 10 from their own 47-yard line. White just keeps on throwing the football. Out in the flat. Loses a couple of yards on the play, Adrian Peterson. 
that's what one thing they want to see Peterson do. He doesn't have real natural catching ability. They want him to improve on that to make him more of a complete bat. And this is the time of the game when, when you allow yourself to do that, give him opportunities. But that was excellent pursuit by the Houston defense running him down on that play. Right again. This pass is tipped incomplete. Like big Cade Lane, number 62 in the middle. Very steady player. He came into tonight. This is his 26th straight start for the Houston Cougars defensive defensive unit. And that's the first word when you ask you to yeah. ask their coaches. What do you say about Cade Lane? Steady. They love it. They love the way he comes in and approaches the game. Well, here's a problem for Houston, too, because they started to get back on their heels. They don't have that bell cow on defense, that one guy that's going to start getting in people's faces. That's up in our brows and the rest of the coaching staff really looking for it. 38 seconds left to play. In the half, White. Scrambling and looking. Wide open. Clayton again. Inside the 25, down to the 24 yard line. He came back to Jason White. Then he saw the quarterback bite on it. That's when he took off. It also helps when you're covered by a linebacker and you're a wide receiver. Lance Everson, number 44. Take a look at him right there. He will be the guy in coverage. Watch him go and cover Clayton to the left of your screen. And then right there, there's Everson leaping for the ball. That's Clayton behind it. At that point, he had eluded him again. Jason White's mobility extending the life of a play. Five catches now for Clayton. Down to the five-yard line. Pass is caught. No, incomplete. It's a tough Clayton crowd. He scooped it. Yes. <laughs> it's a tough crowd. Really? They're up 49 to 7, and they're all over the officials for making a good call because they want one more before the half is over. How about a 24.4 <laughs> average? See Clayton going down trying to get it. Oh, oh my. my. You know something? I think the crowd might have a point. I think they do. <laughs> That's an excellent catch by Mark Clayton, but I'm not going to get on these officials. They're doing no. the best they can. Bang, bang, <laughs> play. Final 15 seconds here in the opening half. Want to try to set up the screen. And he just throws it and takes a hit. The OU coaches want a penalty fly. Bob Stoops wants the penalty fly. And I'm not sure it's going to be on the hit on Jason White. I think it's going to be something else happening in the interior. Yeah. Here's the end of that play again. Number 88, Kendrick Goss giving the shot to Jason White. And the last thing the Sooners need to see is their Heisman Trophy All-American quarterback take a shot before the half's over and get him hurt. They can't afford that. But the penalty was against Oklahoma, I believe. They had someone downfield on the play, offensive lineman downfield. They're trying to set up something. Trying to set up a screen, as you mentioned. If you're wondering why Oklahoma's got Jason White still in there with this big lead, they've got Oregon next week. And don't forget October 9th, then they've got Texas. They need to get him some rest. He sat out so much last year, it amounted to five and a half quarters because of the blowouts. They need him to get his reps this year. White rolling, looking, throwing into the flat, pass is incomplete. Down at the 11-yard line with three seconds left to play in this opening half. Pass intended for Juwan Rankins, the junior out of Windsor, North Carolina. You mentioned the Oregon Ducks having a little bit of trouble right now in their ball game. They, they are down 23 to nothing to the Indiana Hoosiers. And wouldn't that be a surprise? Big win though for Colorado over Washington State today. And of course, Ernie will have the highlights of that was Michigan Notre Dame. Well, this will be a 47-yard attempt by the Cardinal. Bradley to hold. And snap. Kick is on its way. Hits the crossbar. No good. Trying to just curve it in, but that's the way the first half will end. It was all Oklahoma with 49 unanswered points. They lead 49 to 7. Greg Seggers with Bob Stoops. Well, Coach, plenty of highlights for us. But as the coach, what did you feel your team accomplished in that half? Well, a little bit of everything. I, I like the way we played. Uh, started off with the one miscue on defense, but um, easily correctable. And uh, the rest of the, the half has really been pretty solid. With a 49-7 lead, what do you hope to accomplish in the second half? Same thing. You got a lot. You know, I'm sure some other guys will get in and play. Uh, can they execute? Can they 
run our offense, run our defense, and do things the way they should be done. All right, thanks, Greg. For staff, back to you, Ryan. All right, Craig Sager, 49 to 7 is our halftime score. That concludes the first half of college football on TBS, a part of Big PlayStation Saturday. And after the break, we'll go to Ernie Johnson in our studios in Atlanta. Welcome back to college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday. And as we get set to start the third quarter, the Oklahoma Sooners, number two in the country, showing the Houston Cougars why they lead 49 to 7. Hello again, everybody, along with Charles Davis. I'm Ron Thula. Now at the top of the show, we talked about the number one key, and that is maintaining poise for Houston. And it seemed after they got the 7-0 lead, they ran into a little adversity. The wheels sort of started coming off. Without a doubt, Ron. After their opening drive, Houston went down and scored. But from that moment on, Oklahoma overwhelmed them. We talked about in the beginning of the ball game the keys to the game. The first thing was that they had to weather the early storm that Oklahoma would do would come at them hard. 49 unanswered points. Check for Oklahoma. Then you look at sustaining offensive drives. Only four plays per drive. That didn't work out very well for them. Then you go back. Must be great in the red zone on defense. The Sooners four for four in the red zone all four touchdowns. I said they needed to hold them to field goals. That didn't happen either. Let's see if Houston comes out and plays hard in the second half. And if you're Bill, you're our brows, obviously you're going, oh my goodness, Oklahoma gets to start the second half with the football. That's the last thing they want, but maybe it's a good thing if your defense can somehow put a stop on it. And we are underway here in the second half. And that's going to be a deep kick five yards into the end zone. Dustin Bell got it that far and Oklahoma takes the knee. Let's send it down to Craig Sager. Sags. Well, our Bryles said a lot of exciting plays in that first half, but as the opposing coach, it was tough to watch. He told his team, do not bow down. Do not stop playing. We have to finish. He said, do not let them breathe. You give them air, they'll take it all the way. Make them work. He said the goal for the second half was for his team to regain confidence and composure. But Ron, this is a tough place to do that. Boy, and Craig, you're getting a good first hand of it uh, down on the field. You can feel the energy from 82, 83,000 people. But, you know, to Art Browse in Houston, they've got the sixth toughest schedule in 2004 in college football. And he's trying to make them learn from every little bit. Adrian Peterson gets the call in the second half. We have penalty flags thrown all over the place. We saw Kiwan Jones kind of come up limping late in the second quarter. But Peterson's going to get the nod here in the second half. And we'll listen in here what Drew George has to say to us. Well, it's a five-yard penalty, basically. As Marcel Marceau just told us. Yes. <laughs> it was a face mask, a five-yard face mask, meaning that inadvertent one. It's not the biggie. Not the big not the big 15-yarder, personal foul. Well, Travis Wilson wide to the left. Again, man in motion. Peterson will keep it on the ground. Peterson breaks free, still on his feet. What a tough youngster. Lost a couple of yards after he broke the tackle. Rocky Schwartz, the redshirt freshman out of Bradenton, Florida, coming up to make the stop. But what power are we seeing from this 6'2", 210-pound first-year player? Normally, a, a tailback out of high school is more of a slasher, a darter. We'll take a lot of stutter steps and juke as we look at the rushing from last week. 48 carries between the two, Kiwan Jones and Adrian Peterson. Tonight, 20 carries, 79 yards. It hasn't been easy against the Houston front. But normally, a slasher out of high school, Adrian Peterson has power. But he did get the first down. Good pitch. Peterson caught in the backfield. Good job by Rocky Schwartz again. Schwartz has really impressed the coaches, especially in the spring. He's been solid in the fall. And the coaches said, listen, if this kid was 6'2", 6'3", he'd probably be playing in the NFL in a couple of years. And he played so well in the spring that they moved Courtney Brooks. A former starter from strong safety to free safety where he's playing tonight in place of Will Gully, their big play man, who's out with a pulled hamstring. That's how well Rocky Schwartz played in the spring for the Houston Cougars. A loss of two on the play, second down and 12. Jason White still in at quarterback, and he's in the shotgun. They run it again to Peterson. Breaks a couple of tackles, still on his feet. Crosses the 35 up to the 36-yard line. Lance Everson and Courtney Brooks coming up to make the stop. Everson, that senior out of Richmond, Texas. 
Lance Everson, what a what a story. Broke his jaw in the spring in a very freak play. Lost 45 pounds. Got it back, and you ask him why? Mama's cooking. <laughs> and he had to wait until his, love it. He had to wait until his jaw healed enough for him to eat. They wanted to get the weight back on and continue his training. And Mama took him home and fattened him up. Well, we've got a timeout as Oklahoma's facing third down and six. Just about two minutes into quarter number three. And Jason White will come over to talk about this situation. And we'll take a timeout. The Sooners, 49 unanswered points. And Bob Stoops and company have a comfortable cushion. The Sooners leading Houston 49-7 as Houston's in the midst of four games in 19 days. Played on Sunday versus Rice. Playing again tonight. Third down and six. Ball on the 36-yard line for the Sooners. DJ Wolf in the backfield now. Houston brings five. The Sooners pick it up. White into the flat. Complete. First down, Oklahoma. Brandon Jones with the reception. When you look at that Houston schedule, also what stands out to us is only one of their first seven games will actually be played on their home field. Not Reliance Stadium, their home field. And look what comes up on September 23rd. Right, you mentioned 419 days, Sunday night back here again. Then Army at home, that's the only game that they'll play at their own home stadium. And then they play at Reliance Stadium against Miami. They beat Florida State last night in a thrilling game, a big comeback before they get to the meat of their Conference USA schedule. And Army lost to Louisville today. D.J. Wolf on the carry. Over the 50-yard line. Louisville, the preseason pick for Conference USA champion. Returning a bunch of great players. And they've gotten off to a good start. Beat Kentucky in their opener. So how long do you think Jason White's going to play in this ball game? I think it's this series. Um, I think that they've talked about Tommy Grady getting some experience. They need to have that happen. Paul Thompson is listed as their number two quarterback. But they don't want to use him. They want to redshirt him. But there's Tommy Grady, number 15, right there in front of you. He's a guy, redshirt freshman, that they think has a lot of potential, and they need to get him some work if he's going to truly be their number two because they want the redshirt Paul Thompson. Second down and eight, D.J. Wolf tied up as he crosses the 50. Craig Sager, what do you have on that situation? Uh, Jason White and the coaching staff discussed that at halftime. Jason's comment was he wanted to stay out there. As you guys mentioned earlier, there were a lot of quarters last year didn't get a lot of reps. So the coaching staff said, hey, go out there in the first series, figure out what you want to accomplish, put it in the end zone, then come out. We'll try to get a score here on this first possession of the third quarter. Meanwhile, on the sidelines, Tommy Grady already is warming up. He's a good-looking young man, and, and when you look at Jason White, which stands out in his uniform, he's not wearing any braces. He put one on in practice Thursday for just a couple of minutes, but he says, I'm not going to wear braces, and Bob Stoops says, when are you, you going to wear braces? He goes, no. And he said, only if you make me, and Bob Stoops said, it's your choice, but he does wear them in practice during team periods whenever there's contact involved. Well, of course, he is the returning Heisman Trophy winner. And it's amazing because Jason White and talking to him, he doesn't really care about this year. He wasn't on the list last year, he said, and he doesn't really care that nobody's really mentioning him. And you look at the returning Heisman winners and, and everything that's that's gone about, Billy Sims here in Oklahoma, but the last one, Ty Detmer back in 1990. And only one of those guys repeated as the Heisman Trophy winner. That's Archie Griffin, Ohio State, 74 and 75. Billy Sims came back his next year and finished second. Ty Detmer finished third. Roger Staubach and, and Vic Janowitz, neither one of them finished in the top 10 the next season when they when they came out. Doc Blanchard lost to his teammate Glenn Davis. That was the backfield one-two punch. And Bill Walker came back and didn't win it the next year at SMU. Year. So we all know how difficult it is to come back and repeat, but Jason White would gladly trade it off for a Big 12 and a national championship. That's all that's on his mind. And you know, now the cynical media says we don't believe that. Every coach, every player, and Jason White we've talked to, he's just a good old boy from Tuttle, Oklahoma. He's got the trophy at his parents' place, and he honestly just wants to win the title because they feel they disappointed a lot of people last year, especially themselves. And remember, as part of that cynical media, you and I, all the criticism we heard at the end of last year, totally unwarranted for this young man. He deserved the Heisman Trophy. He earned it on the field, and they shouldn't be talking about him not winning it. It wasn't like they picked his name out of a hat or anything. Exactly. Like plenty of time. Throws complete again. Inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, Brandon Jones stretching out that 6-3 frame. Brian Brown on the tackle, and they're going to say it's not a first down. They're going to mark it just a little bit short. That'll bring up a fourth down situation. And because this play was made, this young man right here in white, watch him, number 45, Bryant Brown, 
He's going to get an attaboy in film. Why? He went for the ball, didn't get it, but still made the play. Still hustling, no matter what the score is. And now Blake Ferguson gets to work out for the first time tonight. First Oklahoma punt, and it's going to be a dandy. Inside the five, they'll mark it out at about the six-yard line. Ferguson added over two yards on his kick last year. Nails this one inside the 20. 10-36 left in the third, 37 yards on the punt for Ferguson. College football on TBS brought to you by Allstate. Are you in good hands? And the U.S. Postal Service with more new ways to use U.S. than ever before. The U.S. Postal Service is working for you. Along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome you back to Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. The first of 10 consecutive weeks of college football here on TBS. Between the Big 12 and the Pac-10. Next week, of course, a and and Clemson. On the 25th, Stanford and USC. Houston trails 49-7, 10-36 left to play in the third, and they take over inside their own 10-yard line. Straight ahead running, Jackie Battle, Rusty DeVore check on the stop. Now coming into this game, one thing that Coach Art Browse was very concerned about, they only you know, scored seven points in that Rice game. They've only scored seven tonight. They really wanted to add to their offense this year, but now he's had to get back to the basics and scale things down. They thought that last year they had worked hard on mental toughness and attitude, and they thought this year they'd be able to add more to their scheme. But because of the fact that they only scored seven points against Rice and they had a short work week, they had to scale back coming into this game. Second down and seven. Ryan Gilbert trying to bounce on the outside. You see the speed of that Oklahoma defense. And you see guys with big numbers come flying in, like Carl Pendleton, the redshirt freshman out of Sepulveda. But the defensive tackle is very active on this defense. Houston's defensive line was very active against Rice. They put together a nice, a nice package. Had 43 tackles in that ball game. A number of them for, had nine for losses, five sacks. Excuse me, a sack in that ball game and a pass broken up tonight. It's Oklahoma's defensive line. Line's turn to shine. Third down and three for the Cougars. Oklahoma moving all over the place on defense. Pressure's on top, almost intercepted. Dante Nicholson had it right in the gut, couldn't hold on. Once again, the field position woes for Houston put them in that type of a spot as we see Bo Pelini, the co-defensive coordinator. Nicholson got a little hitch in his get along. Yeah, not gonna like that too much. Hopefully something he can walk off. Well, if Houston thinks they're going to come back in this game throwing the football since 2000. Oklahoma is 41 and 2 when an opponent throws for more than 25 times. <laughs> what does that tell you? One dimensional team. That's right. Rarely have an opportunity to win. Clayton now back to receive this kick, and it's going to be a short one. Clayton at the 47. Stop. Gets to the outside, looking for that one block. Almost gets it. Gets up to the 50 yard line. 40 yard kick. Three yards on the return. Well, in case you just joined us, it was interesting in that first quarter because Houston shocked the Oklahoma Sooners. Had a big long pass play, then they battled it in, take a 7 0 lead, and then Bradley and Oklahoma just turned on the offense. And then how about Perkins? A 41 yard punt return, his eighth of his career, tying an NCAA record. And Adrian Peterson with a touchdown, and it's 49 to 7. Well, Tommy Grady is in at quarterback for the Oklahoma Sooners, the redshirt freshman out of Huntington Beach, California. Now, this is an interesting situation with Tommy Grady. Paul Thompson is the number two quarterback. They want to see if they can get a redshirt. But if Jason White would go down with a season-ending injury this time of the year, I guarantee Tommy Grady would drop back to number two and Paul Thompson would be number one. Yeah, if, if they ever feel that their season is in jeopardy, that they can't achieve their goals because their number one quarterback isn't there, Paul Thompson would go in and be that guy. And Chuck Long, we talked about communication, had talked with, has talked to Paul Thompson about it, has talked with Paul Thompson's parents. They want to redshirt him, but they won't sacrifice their season in order to accomplish that goal. And Tommy Grady's the best thrower of the bunch. He keeps it on the ground. And I think you brought up a good point about communication. What Chuck Long did, he went and talked to Paul Thompson's parents. He said, here's the situation. Yes, we recruited a high school All-American, Brett Bomar. Yes, we've got Grady. Yes, we have Jason White. 
I'm going to be honest with you. And he was honest with Paul Thompson's parents and with that young man, and they said they handled it famously. And the best part is when we, I would laugh at it when we had our meeting with Chuck because I said, you know something? You're doing a great job with that, but how about next spring when Paul Thompson has to compete with Rhett Volmar and Tommy Grady for the starting job? He could redshirt and still not guarantee himself a starting job next season. And he said it's a good problem to have. It's an excellent problem to have if you're a coach. Well, here's Grady looking for his first collegiate completion. Throws across his body, and it's complete at the 35. But Joe John Finley, a very talented redshirt freshman out of Arlington, Texas. Former high school quarterback, and he's got a hitch in his get along. And in case the last name Finley sounds familiar, you Nebraska fans will remember his brother, Clint Finley. Yeah, he's a tough guy. They just need to get a little more weight on him, get a, more, a little more lead in his backside. So he can get down and hunker down and block. You like his potential. How about Tommy Grady's mobility on that play, Ron? And Getting out of the pocket and moving. And he's 6'6". Six, six. We were amazed on that on Thursday at practice, how mobile he was. Keeping it on the ground. Peterson with a stiff arm. Tiptoes down the sideline, and we've got a penalty flag as they throw Peterson around. Not before he gets to the 22-yard line. And Peterson's got a little hitch. Yeah, that was going to be a late hit. Not malicious at all. Just, just could not stop himself. But watch Peterson. I talked about young backs coming out being more of a dancer when they first get to the college level. This guy runs with power. Adrian Peterson is very strong for a young guy. And you see at the end of the play, Courtney Brooks just really unable to pull off getting the penalty. Five yard face mask. Number one six on defense be added to the end of the run five yards first down how about drew george instead of just calling him 16 little one six he a baseball guy too that's like that's a little baseball turn <laughs> we say they're one six that's right <laughs> that's when you're not sure and, and that's part of the problem a lot of coaches say well what happens if the officials start making mistakes about this but they've been pretty good so far you now they end up working them working their way out and correcting it straight ahead running again <laughs> well, Oklahoma not doing anything fancy as Jason White called it the vanilla offense. But when you have a player that's the caliber of Adrian Peterson who likes to run over people rather than run around him at times. And will actually run over his coaches during practice. Yeah. Chuck Long said he's been clipped a few times along the way. And I think Cale Gundy, yep. the running backs coach, he's caught it a couple of times. So he said when 28 has, well, you just need to get out of the way. He's not really into, into dodging very much. Well, he's got over 65 yards running the football right now. I think DJ Wolf's in the backfield now, number 25, has a little more elusiveness to him. And excellent hands in catching the ball. Back and down and eight. It was 8, 49 to 7. Grady looking, looking, throwing, pass complete down to the 12 yard line. Good hands by Will Peoples, the senior out of Humble, Texas. And Ron, you notice Tommy Grady throwing the ball. Let's address this right now. Watch Tommy Grady as he steps up get set to fire. A lot of people say with this kind of a lead, why would you ever throw the football? Are you trying to embarrass the other team? This guy needs work in case he has to play at a critical time. I think Coach Art Riles will understand it. You know, you can't just go ahead and sit on it all the time because you can actually get your own guys hurt if that's all you do and let the defense load up on you. You have to continue to play the game. We want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goalpost cam. You're in good hands with Allstate. It's back to Peterson. Cuts inside, bounces outside. First down, Oklahoma. Courtney Brooks coming up to make the stop again, but what a move by Peterson. Is that the old give him the leg and take it away? Right. Huh? And I just talked about his power and said DJ Wolf's the elusive one. Well, Adrian Peterson can be elusive too. Watch this, following the block by Dan Towns in number 39. Whoop, whoop, got right in the hole before Courtney Brooks. And then Joe Clay comes down to help out. Nice run by the freshman. Well, his 35-yard touchdown run last week versus Bowling Green, he did sort of the same thing. He put a little juke in and busted out to the outside. 72 yards rushing now for the freshman. And we're going to have a timeout called by Oklahoma. Five minutes and 17 seconds left to play in quarter number three. Bob Stoops seeing some of the future of Oklahoma right before his eyes. His team leads 49 to 7. College football Saturday here on TBS. The Oklahoma Sooners and the Houston Cougars. Oklahoma with a 14-game home win streak, 31-1 at home 
during the Bob Stoops era, and they're about to add one more to that notch. With 5-17 in the third, the Sooners lead it 49-7. First and goal on the five-yard line. Townsend and Peterson now in the backfield. Brady face. Pass, clock. Dan Townsend, the former linebacker, knocked out of bounds. The sophomore out of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Didn't have a reception last year. His first this year. You mentioned he's a former linebacker. Usually they're not known for their hands, but that's an excellent catch. Stretching to get it, and then tucking it away and absorbing the hit. Dan Townsend enjoying his time now in the backfield. Now the former high school wrestler and power lifter. Finished third in the state powerlifting championship, so you know he's a hoss. Second down and goal. We'll call it the two-yard line. Robertson motion. The pitch. Peterson's going to be stacked up for a loss all the way back to about the 13-yard line. Joe Clay, the senior out of San Angelo, Texas, on the stop. How tough is Joe Clay? Here is a guy that last year during the bowl game played with three broken ribs. I'd say that's the definition of tough. When you have a broken rib, it hurts to just breathe, let alone go out and bang around and play for 60 minutes on artificial, you know, on field turf out in Hawaii. What a nice play out on, on that last one also by Rocky Schwartz, number 37, forcing the pitch early. Mm -hmm. Took away the lane and allowed Joe Clay to clean up. Schwartz has had a nice game. It's, they told us that he doesn't play just like a true freshman, does he? Excuse me, a good good freshman. Third down and goal from the nine. Brady looking, throwing, looking for his first collegiate touchdown pass, and he's got it to Travis Wilson. Well, Jason White gives the attaboys. Travis Wilson with his second touchdown reception of the evening. Brady's first as an Oklahoma Sooner. And DeCarlo on to kick the extra point again. to seven the Oklahoma Sooners lead the Houston Cougars let's set it down to Craig Sager with a man who hopes to see his son play for the Sooners one of these days thanks all right you are Ron Tommy Grady obviously leading the Sooners to a touchdown the third string quarterback while the second string quarterback Paul Thompson and his father Mark only sit watch and cheer how difficult is this first of all for you knowing that he's a second string quarterback but going through a possible redshirt year it's not that difficult. It gives it gives Tommy an opportunity to play. You know, Paul gets an opportunity to still learn, get get reps in practice, and see he can't get another year, so he can uh, come in here and hopefully uh, win the starting job and go from there. You obviously seem relaxed here, but what is it like for your son having to go through practice, not knowing well if Jason White goes down, I'm the number one quarterback. If he doesn't, I don't play all year. He's comfortable with it. We've already talked about it. We've discussed it. Um, you know, I put certain scenarios to him, and, you know, he knows he's going to have to, you know, suck it up. And I know he wants to play, um, but, you know, this is, I think, what's in the best interest for the team. It's what's in the best interest for Paul. So I think it'll work out. I think he'll be okay with it. Ron and Charles mentioned Chuck Long, all the respect he has for you and your family, the discussions he had with you about what to do with Paul Thompson. What does Chuck Long mean to you? Chuck Long is uh, probably the main reason we came here. Um, I thought he could teach Paul to, you know, be quarterback learn get better um, he's been in our corner the whole side we had discussions about this and um, you know i asked him about it he asked me some questions and we just both thought this would be the right thing to do if it works out that way and hopefully jason will stay healthy and take it to another national championship well, Paul Thompson is the heir apparent, but Tommy Grady is going to get some experience this year. They also have the number one high school recruit last year in Red Bomar. Does Paul think he'll have a fight for the job next spring? Everybody on this team is going to have to fight for their job. Nobody's going to be given anything here. You're going to have to go in there, you're going to have to win it, and you're going to have to play well to do that. Um, he knows that. He knew that coming here. If you want to play and you want to play with the best, you come to Oklahoma. If you're scared of competition, you don't come here. Great father figure for Paul. Thanks for being with us. Back to you, Ryan. I tell you what, Craig, Bob Stoops wishes he had probably 100 parents like that with that attitude. you got to compete no matter what. Bob's pass is complete to Steven Cucci, the big tight end who had missed all of last year, but back in 2002 was all conference USA from that tight end's position. A big target at 6'5, 270. 
Hey, hey, Craig, quick question for you. Yes. Did you get a sense from Mr. Thompson that the, here's, here's the worst case scenario? Paul doesn't play all year. Jason goes down in the Big 12 championship game, and now they're asking to burn Paul's red shirt. Are they comfortable with that? Yes, they are. They've discussed all the scenarios, all options. Obviously, that's something you wait to see. If Tommy Grady has a great year and somehow plays a lot of playing time between now and then, maybe the coaching staff would feel differently. But right now, if Obviously, Jason White would go down, even if it would be in the Big 12 championship, with a shot at national championship. Remember, Paul Thompson gets all the reps and practice as the number two quarterback. Which, thanks, thanks, Craig. Which we saw on Thursday. That we did. Now, many, many more reps than Tommy Grady, right, Ron? That's right. Four wide receivers set now for the Houston Cougars. They're just trying to get something going. We heard Craig Sager talk to what Coach Brown said at halftime. He's not laying down. Is complete up to the 40 yard line. This is the Houston offense we thought we'd see. Kendall Riles with his the third reception of the year or the, of the night. And we got a penalty flag out of play. That's what we saw Bowling Green do to Oklahoma last week. A lot of those quick looking passes on their defense. Another sideline warning for Oklahoma. I'm going to go out on a limb here. There's a trend. <laughs> I, I think. I think they're trying to clean up sidelines this year. I may be wrong. I think you've got that correct. And I think what we're also seeing from Art Bryles' team, you mentioned, you know, what he told them at the half, who's going to stay with it, who's going to keep competing. I think they're doing that. Trying to establish something on the run with Jackie Battle. Maybe got a couple on the first and 10, 309 to play in the third quarter. Coach Prowls just coaching his team up on the far side. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. How about this? This is almost like a mass substitution. First and ten from the 36-yard line. Looked like about five guys came off and five guys came on. Cobb rolling, smothered underneath back at the 44-yard line. There was a wave of Sooners led by Jonathan Jackson who got his second sack of the night. That's the fourth of the night for the Sooners. Very slow developing play for Houston that actually developed right into a blitz from Oklahoma. Bad combination. You know, you've got a fake and then a quarterback rolling out right into the teeth of the blitz that Oklahoma brought. End result, another big play for the OU defense. Well, you see four sacks for the Sooners, none for the Cougars. Loss of eight on the play. Second down and 18. See, see Kevin Cobb looking to the sideline to get the check. The check is straight from Art Bryles, the head coach and offensive coordinator. Five wide receivers. The Sooners bring five. A quick looking pass off the hands of Kendall Bryles. That might have been able to be caught. Cobb had some Sooners. speed on that ball. Houston's had moderate success tonight. When they get into a spread formation, four or five wide receivers in the pattern, having their receivers get inside the Oklahoma defensive backs for opportunities. There was one that was missed by the Houston Cougars. That was funny when you were asking Coach Browse, listen, do you get it from your wife when you get home? If Kendall doesn't do well, you don't play him enough? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much he said, nope, nope, nope. Our roles are pretty defined in our house. Yep, <laughs> we, we, hey, he said 26 years of marriage. We figured it out. <laughs> Cobb fakes right, throws left, incomplete off the hands again. Leonard Gibson had the hands on it, the sophomore from Corsicana, Texas. That's a couple of passes that Kevin Cobb's had go in and out of the hands of his receivers. And Kendall Bryles is supposed to be a quarterback, but he's such a good athlete, they wanted to get him on the field, so he's moved the receiver to play a lot. He missed the previous pass, and then on that one, Leonard Gibson had an opportunity on a well-designed play. Fake to one side of the field, come back with an inside screen to the wide receiver. He would have had some running room if he had pulled it down. Well, Jawan Rankins now, the third OU player to line up in a punt return formation. He's back at the 10-yard line. High kick. Rankins moves back to the eight. And that's where the Sooners will begin. Let's send it back to Atlanta. Here's EJ. Just a reminder, we'll have USC right here on TBS in two weeks from tonight. They take on Stanford. Yeah, some penalty flags are thrown. You know, interesting because there's been a lot of hype about Jason White and Matt Leinert and sort of doing what they did with Billy Sims a few years ago. Snap. Ball start. 
69 on the offense, five yard penalty, first down. And remember the you know the picture of Billy Sims trying to take the Heisman Trophy and all of this, and they asked Jason White, "You want to do that, with Matt Liner?" And he says, "No, I don't really care." And Liner goes, "I think that's kind of cool." Yeah, two distinct personalities. Definitely two different personalities. We look at our upcoming schedule next week: Clemson at Texas A&M. Clemson tonight playing Georgia Tech. A&M winning today. USC we just saw winning against Colorado State, taking on Stanford. And then we have a doubleheader on October 2nd: Big 12, Pac-10. Peterson is stacked up inside the five-yard line. I remember that picture you're talking about. It's the cover of National Magazine, the Heisman Trophy, and it was Charles White and Billy Sims, mm -hmm. and both in the ex and the the title was "Hey Man, That's My Heisman," and they wanted to recreate it in Oklahoma Sooner, USC Trojan, and Jason White said, "Enough of the hype. I just want to play ball." And Matt Liner said, "I can understand that, but it still would have been cool to do this. It would have been good." Well, Jawan Rankin's now limping off. We've seen Peterson with a little ankle. We've seen Joe John Finley with an ankle. Now we see Jawan Rankin's with a little ankle problem. The snap, Brady pulls it down. Peterson bounces to the outside and barely gets into positive territory. We have a penalty flag. You hate to see a good play negated by Houston's defense. And I'm telling you, their defensive front has played fairly well against the Oklahoma running game tonight. Dead ball, personal foul, number one on the defense, 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. And still having second down on the uh, one foot line, now you give him a first down. Too bad their active linebacker, number one, Wade Cole, is gonna be an inside run. Here it is to Adrian Peterson. See how the defensive line got the penetration and pushed it back? Almost took him into the end zone. And then right at the end of the play, Wade Cole, number one, well after the play was over, fell onto the pile and negated an excellent play by the Houston defense. Yeah, Cole is going to be a monster linebacker for this Houston team, just a sophomore. He's one of the fastest defenders, and he is going to be a man for Coach Pryor. Sooners keep it on the ground. Straight ahead of running with Adrian Peterson. Well, this week's installment of Home Depot Building a Team features Oklahoma's class of 1999. Now, let's set the stage. Bob Stoops is head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners. He has nine weeks for his first recruiting class. He hires Mike Stoops, hires Bobby Jack Wright. So let's get out and get some players. They kind of got players that maybe some teams didn't want, including Quentin Griffin. Yeah, and take a look at this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon Everidge, All-American. Qu Quinn Griffith, All-American. You go right down the line. Torrance Marshall came in from junior college, ended up being an All-American linebacker. <laughs> All these guys that people didn't want worked out pretty well for the Sooners. You know, it's funny because Brett Venables was talking about you know, watching tape of people like Jason White and Nate Hibble and Josh Heupel back then. And, Said, you know, we looked at that tape, and chances are we probably wouldn't have recruited any of those guys today. <laughs> but what they they saw something in them that they knew were going to be great players. And that set the foundation for Oklahoma as we head to quarter number four. Jason White's duty is done for the evening. But the Sooners, who scored plus 50 points seven times last year, are over the half a hundred mark right now, 56-7 over Houston. Welcome back to college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday. And as we get set to start the fourth quarter, the Oklahoma Sooners lead the Houston Cougars 56 to 7. Along with Craig Sager, Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. We look at the young freshman quarterback, Tommy Grady. Second down and seven for the Sooners. From the shotgun, a little fake, a little play action, a little pass down with a flat, a little completion. Bill Peoples on the reception. Well, this has been a dominating place for the Oklahoma Sooners. 14-game win streak. That's what they've averaged. How about 47 points to 12 for opponents? That is dominating your home field. <laughs> With 60, 50-plus points game scored. Not bad. Even got the 70 once. We got the game last year against Texas A&M here. Believe they won that 77 to 0. Three in the 60s. And that's like college basketball scores these guys are putting together. And they're up the, uh, the capacity here to over 82,000. And for the second consecutive week, we're at 84,000. <laughs> Not bad. Brady pass. Almost intercepted, overthrown. Right into the hands of Stanford Route. An opportunity missed for Houston with Stanford Route. Pass broken up. That's good. 
but he'll get a negative on his play sheet and he gets graded Ron yeah. because that's a ball he should have caught. So his defensive back there said good, good, good job being in position. But you got to catch that one. Take it the other way. Give us an opportunity. Now the Sooners with their second punt of the night. And wake Blake Ferguson up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old headset on over there. Now spiraling kick back to the 10 yard line, backtracking to the 8 yard line. Ronnie Avery trying to find some kind of running room. 64 yards on the kick. We'll call it 19 on the return. Well, fans, it's time to vote for your team mobile player of the game. Now, here's how you vote. You pick up your phone, which is easy to do. Text A, B, C, or D and send to TBS 827. And we'll give you the results just a little bit later. You have a choice of Cole, Perkins, White, or Clayton. Tough choice. I got to go with Mark Clayton. Yeah, not bad, huh? And the results is going to be shown in the post-game show with EJ. So you have a Heisman Trophy winner, an NCAA record holder. <laughs> That's a little tougher. Exactly. Lots of voting. Now the Cougars take over. Ryan Gilbert, left side, has some running room. You know, I'd like to see Brett Venables and also Bo Pelini on that. Even though you're up big, those coaches do not like when this kind of stuff happens. No. Somebody bounces to the outside. No, we saw Bo Pelini standing there. He will be the calmer of the two. Brent Venables is probably bursting the vein right now <laughs> because this is not what he likes to see. An excellent run by Ryan Gilbert. Got a nice block up front, and then made the most of what he could getting outside. There's Brent Venables. Think he's still intense? Look at that face. Keeping it on the ground. Cobb dances to the outside. And one of the changes in Oklahoma's defense, they didn't change a whole lot when Bo Pelini came aboard. But Brent Venables and Pelini, they talked about more accountability this year with loafing and with mental assignments and finishing plays. And they're holding everybody accountable. But what's happened is the players are holding each other accountable now. Yeah, they put together a grade sheet that they wanted everyone to see so you'd see all the scores each day in practice and after every game. McDaniel, that's his second tough hit he has taken tonight. We have a penalty flag thrown on the far side of the field. Yeah, they, they said they wanted to quantify mm -hmm. what they were talking about. So they came up with a system, and now the players observe the grade sheet, and then they get on each other and continue to work with each other, trying to get everyone better so no one loafs on any plays or takes a playoff or does the wrong thing. Well, Bo Pelini says that it's probably been tougher on Brent than it has Brent has been on him because he says, you know, Brent was used to this emotional Mike Stoops. And, you know, Mike's doing a great job down in Arizona. But he says that Brent has really opened him in open arms. And Brent has taken the stuff that Bo Pelini learned in the NFL with the Green Bay, the 49ers, and taken it to heart. Say, can you add a little bit? Yeah, Bo Pelini was talking about where he got the accountability in practice and now the grading system. He said he got it from Pete Carroll when he worked with Pete Carroll in the NFL. I talked to Pete Carroll about it, and he said the number one thing he thinks is the most important part of all his success is competition. He likes the players to compete. He likes them to be accountable. He thinks competition brings out the best in them. It's also interesting, he has a depth chart. When the number one player goes down, he says, I do not automatically promote the next guy. It's an open competition. He says it's like the guy who gets passed down for a job. He goes to the president says hey I've got 15 years of experience and the president says no you've had one year of experience 15 times wow. <laughs> so, so Craig it sounds almost like wrestle offs right you know when a guy you have to wrestle for one spot and you got two guys going HR whoever wins goes competition brings out the best yeah, absolutely good stuff I guess you'd call that user friendly <laughs> yes. 13 31 left in the ball game and the penalties were against the Houston Cougars and second down and eight. And things have come to a screeching halt. I think Houston. I think Houston's calling a timeout. Time out. Trailing 56 to 7. Clock up, clock up. Well, let's take a look at tonight's All-State. Good hands play. You're in good hands with All-State. And there were a bunch of them, but this was the best. Jason White with Travis Wilson. For the touchdown, Wilson with two touchdown catches tonight. I got to get on the Travis Wilson diet. There's no timeout. There's a clock problem. Clock we problem. They're trying to get it all, all set up, and they've asked the clock operator to do something with the time. 13:39. Not 35. Not 30, boy, that 39. four seconds could make a difference. Yes, it will. 
<laughs> but you know, we were talking, I just talked about Travis Wilson and his diet. That's a guy who lost about between 11 and 15 pounds since last season. Mm -hmm. He said he'd gotten too big, and his only, you talk about guys getting on each other and accountability. The other wide receivers start calling him the fake David Boston. Oh, that that's he'd gotten cold. so big because you remember David Boston, the former All Star yep. receiver, now with the Dolphins, had gotten up to about 258. Mm -hmm. Really had to rip body, but they thought that that might be slowing him down in, in his play. And they said, You're the fake David Boston. And he got the message, dropped the weight, and has come back and had a great fall camp and worked his way into the rotation again. Well, we're still waiting for that infamous four seconds. <laughs> Well, next week we will head down to then now he's back in the lineup and Coach Fran pitches the shutout today, so maybe hopes are renewed down there. I think so, and you got to take a look at Clemson, ranked number 15 in the country. Have a tough one with Georgia Tech tonight in Death Valley at Clemson, and if they can come out of that one, they'll be 2-0 heading to Aggieland and riding, I believe, a six-game win streak from the end of last year when their last four, including a big bowl victory over number six Tennessee at the time. And now going on, what, what won their opener in overtime against Wake Forest. That could be a heck of a good ball game. On second and eight, Cobb just puts his head down as he is buried over by a bunch of big bottles. Remy Aodell comes up. The junior out of Grand Prairie, Texas, the transfer out of Northeastern Oklahoma at AM. His second sack of the night and fifth for the Sooners. And put a cap on our game for next week. Reggie McNeil, the quarterback, as you mentioned, played for AM tonight. Led him to a 31 to nothing victory. And on the other side, his counterpart for Clemson, Charlie Whitehurst. A lot guy a lot of people say is the best quarterback in the ACC. So get a look at those two guys going at it next week. And it's Clemson and Georgia Tech tied up at seven and a half time. Ready to update that at the end of the ball game. Pass is incomplete. Pass is incomplete. From tenant for Steven Cucci. The big tight end. That'll bring up a fourth down and 14. All oh, the punting for Houston got better. In that first half, it was not very good. Justin Laird really had his problems, but since then, he seems to have settled down a little bit. He's getting him in the 40 yard range. And no offense to Justin, it couldn't have gotten much worse in the first half. He just wasn't That's hitting right. it well at all. Maybe now he's relaxed a little bit, getting it out of his system. He can now show his true talents. Mark Clayton's going to try his hand at returning punts. He's standing back on his own 15-yard line. There's plenty of time, a line drive kick. He lets it go, and it's going to take a Houston stop. At about the three, we have a penalty flag thrown back at the 42-yard line. We'll have to wait and see what they say. There is no penalty. There was enough men on the line of scrimmage. All right. And yeah, we've got a timeout. 1246 left to play in the ball game. The Sooner cheerleaders like what they see so far. Oklahoma leads at 56-7. Sooners lead at 56-7. 12:46 left to play in the ball game. And our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. The and the Sooners take over, first and ten. The ball is on the three-yard line. After excellent kick by Laird. Tommy Grady, Tommy Grady has been the quarterback. Jason White played one series here in the second half. D.J. Wolf now in the backfield. Right ahead, trying to get a little bit of elbow room at Lance Everson coming up to make his stop. Senior out of Richmond, Texas. Good test here for Oklahoma's second string offensive line, what they call coming out or backed up field position. I'm sure the Oklahoma coaches may try to wedge it out of there with three running plays. They'd sure love to see these guys power forward and get a first down and give them some breathing room. Oh, Kevin Wilson's telling us he'd love to have eight guys he can count on every week for that offensive line. Want to make sure you can move people around. David Robinson in motion. Brady thrown out on the flat pass is complete up to about the seven yard line. DJ Wolf making the catch. Do you see DJ Wolf starting to become a Reggie Bush of USC? I think that's what they're trying to get to in terms of a package for him. 
what will be the best runs for him, getting him out into open space because he has the great hands, as they, de as they described us. He has wide receiver hands, very elusive in the open field. Try and get him into the slot, get him out wide, get good matchups for them, and have him do things in open field. I think that's a, that's a good comparison, trying to use a Reggie Bush type of a package for him. Well, we'll have our own comparison in a couple of weeks. We'll see him playing Stanford yeah. here on TV. Maybe not as many carries as Reggie right. Bush might get in the game. Brady throws the pass right at the first down marker to David Robinson. Is he the little admiral? He's the little admiral. The very little admiral. David Robinson is a walk-on, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he is. Who was said he was inspired by another walk-on here at Oklahoma. Number 73 offensive lineman John Flynn from Anadarko, I believe it is, Oklahoma who's come in and become an offensive lineman and kind of worked his way up into the rotation. You love seeing that. That's the 15-yard line. So yeah, keep it on the ground. Oh, well, it's time for the Fan Ranch, brought to you by Kia Motors, which reminds you to make every mile count. This is, these are the Roughnecks, the spirit group that's been around Oklahoma for decades. They're the ones who also have the Sooner Scooter. And they're doing our little rant. And then we have the basic fan. <laughs> and the rant's all about showing school spirit and rooting on your team. And they did that. Second down and nine for the Sooner. Going ahead and running is DJ Wolf. Keyvon Jones has not played since about the second quarter, late in the second quarter. We saw him hobble off just a little bit as Brooks now. Down. A bit of pain. They can ill afford to lose another deep safety guy, Will Gully, yeah. their top guys out of this game with a bad hamstring, and that's why Courtney Brooks has moved into play. They don't want to lose him. He's made a lot of nice plays tonight for the Houston Cougars. And you're talking about David Robinson catching the ball and saves inspired by John Flynn, offensive lineman number 73. Worked his way into the rotation. Kevin Wilson, his offensive line coach, said he really didn't beat anyone out. Mm -hmm. He just outworked people and outlasted them. And John Flynn gains his inspiration from Kevin Wilson, his offensive mm -hmm. line coach, because Kevin did the exact same thing at the University of North Carolina where he was a walk-on and worked his way into the rotation with the Tar Heels. And so he has a soft spot in his heart for guys who will work hard like John Flynn, work themselves into it. And he says, you know something? He's got a scholarship, but it wasn't a gift. He earned it. And actually, he will get meaningful snaps for us this year as we take a look at Kevin Wilson, the run game coordinator and offensive line coach for the Sooners. So if you work hard at this, you know, in this game, you have an opportunity. And David Robinson has seen it happen at OU. And off they go. They know you have a walk-on center during the national championship team. They call John Flynn the next Kevin Wilson. Exactly. I think he'll go into coaching, too. Brady lines up, fires good enough for another first down for the Oklahoma Sooners. That's a Leo Ford on the reception, his first catch of the year. Speaking of using guys in the passing game, Leo Ford getting out wide, another receiver running an out cut. Ball delivered very well by Tommy Grady. Now, Grady is now seven for seven throwing the football for 45 yards. Not a bad debut plus a touchdown. I think that'll work. He'll feel very heartened after, after his work tonight. Wolf steps over a couple of defenders with a stiff arm as he crosses the 40, and that should be a late hit. And it is. Here comes the penalty flags. Well, the first hit. Stanford route. Rocky Schwartz came up to clean him up. But then we had a penalty. Good run, though, by Wolf. Watch him get through the traffic, navigates, and then breaks to the outside. Get the ball tucked firmly in the outside arm, slips the first tackle. Yeah, try, tries to use a stiff arm. Just no awareness right there of where he was on the field. The last defender for Houston coming into the play. Well, you got to be aware where you are because yeah, I think that was Stanford route who yeah, Stanford got route. the penalty. No awareness at all about where he was on the field and launched the tackle way too late. Well, I think our Browns pretty much summed it up. Straight ahead running. Runs 
inside the 40 yard line. DJ Wolf again. What a luxury is this for Bob Stoops, who now has a breakaway threat. He's got the hard runner. And he's got the guy with the good hands. And when they hit to the Big 12 schedule, you're going to need these three kind of tailbacks. Well, the Big 12 North, tough day today. Yeah, I mean, Colorado came in. And we went to Seattle and took on Washington State at a quote unquote neutral site venue, but still in the state of Washington. That's a big win for Colorado today. And something the Big 12 North sorely needed. Peterson back into the ball game. Breaks, looks for the corner. No, said he stepped out of bounds at the one yard line. <laughs> Tough crowd, like you said. But that'll put him over 100 yards rushing for the second consecutive game. But do you know why this crowd is so upset? Because he represents what they did not have last year. And he's carrying the hopes of a national championship. A lot of the fans are saying this running game and a breakaway threat at running back is exactly what we needed. He looked like he hit looked like the pylon, he hit the pylon and got in. Did. But let's see if they give him another shot to take it into the end zone now or if they have a new back into the game. I think Peterson is still in. I believe that's him right here at tailback. Let's see if they give him a chance now. That was in motion. Ah, we have a whistle. Boy, it looked on our replay that he put his foot right on the pylon. Let's take a look at it again. But is it the False start. It hit the pylon. Offense, and five the, yard penalty, still first down. And, and the ball, see where it was frozen? The yeah. ball was in the inside arm crossing the goal line, which is exactly what you need. So the pylon hitting and the ball crossing the goal line should have equaled touchdown. It didn't, but he'll get another opportunity here, I gotta believe. Well, it's first and goal now from the six yard line. He might get a few cracks at it to try and get it in. Ball is loose on the ground. Peterson picks it up. Going to lose some, maybe. Breaks to the outside. Whoa! Takes a big hit, loses the ball, but he's down. I think it's all going to come back. I, I thought he was going jumped. And you just don't want to see this young man hurt. He's slow to get up. He took quite a knock. But he's got that magic about him, doesn't he? Every time he touches the ball, you can feel everyone come to the edge of their seats or on their feet. And there was the big hit on his leg, and he landed on his head. Ball was down by, by contact with the ground. And now they've got him out, just want to get him checked out a little bit. Well, Coach Gundy said just go sit down. His penalty was on Houston. They'll move the ball with 9.31 to play. It'll be first and goal again, this time from about the three yard line. DJ e. Wolf back into the lineup. Peterson with 116 yards rushing. DJ e. Wolf stops, cuts his head. Still moving his feet. Gets down to about the two and a half yard line. Well, when you think of freshman running backs here at Oklahoma back in 1982, as a young man by the name of Marcus Dupree, that's what he did on the left. So far, Adrian Peterson on the right, and that's updated stats, 216. But I think the difference between the two, Adrian Peterson, the coaches tell us, has an incredible work ethic. Mr. Dupree really didn't have one of those when he was here his freshman year. No, and don't forget, Marcus Dupree didn't get turned loose until later in the season. Barry Switzer was being very careful with him. Adrian Peterson has played since game one. And you talk about the work ethic. We'll talk about that more after this play of Adrian Peterson. Second and goal from the three. Wolf. Looks the scene. Looks, looks. Gets close to about the one. And he is stopped. Talk about Adrian Peterson's work ethic, partner. He came to he came to campus early this summer and started working out with the team and started going around seeking out the different players getting to know them, introducing himself, but he worked out with the intensity of the varsity, and it's hard for freshmen to come in and match that intensity. He did that, and so the guys started drifting into the coach's office and saying, hey, this young kid's the real deal because they have respected what he did in getting ready for the season. Third down and goal. Peterson, touchdown, Oklahoma. Well, all that 
work has paid off. You saw the upper body strength of Adrian Peterson after he took the hit to just drag the defenders in there. Pretty good gams, too, to be able to <laughs> keep them churning and pounding through there. The Sooners now have 63. Houston now has seven. Adrian Peterson with another touchdown tonight from the running back spot. He's over 116 yards rushing and a couple of trips to Fader. College football on TBS brought to you by Chili's. Want more flavor in your life? Come to Chili's. The Home Depot, go from wondering how to knowing how. At the Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. Kia Motors, eight cars, one belief, make every mile count. And Pioneer Pure Vision Plasma Displays, the purest color, the purest experience. Now some future OU cheerleaders. They've had a lot to cheer about tonight as Oklahoma leads at 63 to 7. And we talked about 50 points in seven games last year, including four straight to put that in a historical perspective. Barry Switzer had never more had never had any more than two straight. That shows how impressive that was last year. About two yards deep. Jason Carter comes up with the big slam. Let's take a look at our pioneer play of the game. And when you talk about the plays of the game, we've had a lot of them, but let's go to a guy who tied a record. And not just any record, an NCAA record. His eighth punt return, and this is a guy that they tried to kick the ball away from, were unsuccessful in doing so, and they paid for it with the punt return for a touchdown by Antonio Perkins. Ties Wes Walker's record with eight, and he still has a lot of games to try to add to that. And Wes Walker, the scat back from Texas Tech. Boy, I enjoyed watching him play. Well, I'll tell you what, for, for a guy his size from Heritage Hall High School, actually right up the road here from Norman, he was quite a player. And don't forget, he really wasn't fast. That was the best part about it. You put a clock, a clock on him, you'd say, no way. But game speed and elusiveness and great vision in his running, he was quite a football player at Texas Tech. 7-10 to go in the ball game. Second down and six. Harry McDaniel. McDaniel's had a couple of nice plays tonight, but he has really paid for him on at least three. He's had to earn it. He slipped the first tackle attempt by Brandon Shelby, number five, a one-on-one -on -one open field tackle. But then as he tried to get downfield, he took the double whammy from the Oklahoma Sooner defense. McDaniel, just a redshirt freshman out of Lubbock. Third down and only two. Right ahead running. First down, Houston, Ryan Gilbert. You know, we talk about the co-defensive coordinators, Brent Venables and Bo Pelini for Oklahoma. The relationship, though, with Bo Pelini and Bob Stoops goes a long way back, right, Craig Sager? Yeah, normally Ernie Johnson gives our updated scores, but Bo Pelini and Bob Stoops want everybody to know that their alma mater Cardinal Mooney High School in Youngstown, Ohio, won last night over Cleveland Eastshaw, 35 to nothing to go 3-0. and Now, Bob's father was the defensive coordinator. It's a position now held by his older brother, Ron. They have been playing the OU-style defense. They have yet to give up a touchdown all season. They have that big Steel Valley rivalry, though, next weekend against Warren Hardy. And ironically, not only did all six of the Stoops' children go to Cardinal Mooney High School, but I talked to Bob. He says, his best teammate? World boxing champion Ray Boom Boom Mancini. You should have seen him on kickoffs. <laughs> boom, boom Boom had to have been a wedge buster. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't you think? It had to have been. <laughs> they play some good football that Youngstown. Cardinal Mooney High. One of the great high schools in the Youngstown area. Take it out to the right side. Riles. Picks up some yardage. Had the big play, of course, in the first game. And we have a penalty flag thrown. Things he ducked Dead out balls. of bounds. Personal foul. Late, held, late hit out of bounds on the defense. Number six. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. 
Stick around for the Dodge Post Game Reporter. Ernie Johnson will catch you up on all of today's action, including that Michigan Notre Dame highlights with a report from Todd Donahoe. And we'll look ahead at next week's game on TBS between Texas A&M and Clemson. And there were some shockers today in college football. Oregon losing and Kansas State losing. Michigan, Michigan losing at Notre Dame. Yeah. Nebraska going down. Nebraska trailing 6-3 at halftime. Pass caught, nice catch. Oh, a beautiful throw too. That was well done, Leonard Gibson on the reception. Now I know they don't have a playbook that everyone carries at Houston, but this is just how they draw it up on the big board, isn't it? And they talk about designing a play. Perfectly thrown ball, great catch. Good coverage by Williams, number 41. But that ball was just thrown so well, he had no chance, Gary and Williams. Gilbert again on the run. So we didn't see Anthony Evans that much, the starting running back. Jackie Battles played sparingly, but has played well at times. But they're getting a good look at Ryan Gilbert, who was the transfer from LSU. Only had one rush versus Rice last week for negative yardage. Good size young man at 5'10", 215, but he's getting a little bit of work tonight. And it's good for him to get in and get some positive plays. He fumbled the opening kickoff against Rice last yeah. week in their game. It led to an early score for Rice and set the tone for the evening for Houston. So he's trying to erase that memory with tonight. Jackie Battle stepping over people, tries to get up to that first down marker. Jason Carter, the sophomore for Kelsey, Oklahoma on stop. You know, when you talk to the other coaches, Houston and Dave Maggard, the AD, who, who hired and also gave uh, Art Browse an extension already this year, you talk to them, they say, one thing Coach Browse has done, he's made this team a true team. He's old-time Texas football, my friends. He's that West Texas style that you play together, you win together, and you lose together. And I guarantee after tonight, that attitude is going to prevail in the Houston locker room. Yeah, that's a great that's a great point that you make. He, he's the offensive guru as this play develops. He also makes sure the defense is taken care of, too. Bob rifles the pass to the 10-yard line, down to the 9-yard line. It's Gibson again. 407. Now, this is where the starters of OU on defense are standing up saying, guys, what are you doing? Yeah, and I don't think they're going to go running back into the game either. No. I think that what's going to happen is that this has been a situation created by the second team defense. They're going to have their opportunity to try and work their way out of it. And Houston, of course, wants to have this kind of a drive to have a good taste in their mouths as they get on the plane and get out of here. Dusty Dvorak would look at me. <laughs> it would be Crumble City. On the ground, Battle tries to get in, but he's going to be a scope short. How about that? That's not, not a I remember not, you know, a Jim, smidge, not a smidge, not a smidge, not a smidge. Jim Ross, JR from the WWE told me. Speaking I of would, WWE. I would take Dusty Dvorak in a New York minute because I think he's got all the makings of what we want. And he's been kind of coy about that. You see the face paint he's got going on. Yeah. All right, that's kind of WWE looking. But he's been coy. He said, ah, football first, football first. <laughs> Here's a kid, first two years, no starts. Last year, first team all big ball and academic all big ball. Looks like Houston punched it in. Touchdown, Ryan Gilbert. Gilbert's first touchdown as a Houston Cougar. Let's give them a lot of credit for that drive on. A lot of credit, a lot of character shown by the Houston Cougars and Art Bryles' team. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to do that. This thing's been over for a long time, but they stayed with it. Ran their offense. You notice it wasn't just throw, throw, throw. Ran their plays. Try to tune them up, trying to get ready for Army next week in the Conference USA Open. An excellent drive. Here's Dustin Bell looking for his 69th consecutive PAT, and it's blocked. Oh, my goodness. He had the third best active streak in points after touchdown, and that is stopped. But Gilbert gets the touchdown, and Houston has 13. Houston scored first in that opening quarter, but it has been all Oklahoma since then. 63 13 is our score. 3-10 remain to be played in the ballgame. A little strip kick, and Oklahoma's just going to fall on it at about the 37-yard line. Jason Carter falls on the pigskin. Well, Jason White played the first half and a series in the second half, and he is from Tunnel, Oklahoma, just west of Norman, Oklahoma. How about the fact that the four Heisman Trophy winners from the Sooners 
They're all from small towns, Charles. Yeah, every one of them. I mean, you're talking about Hooks, Texas for Billy Sims, Tuttle, Oklahoma here for Jason White, Steve Owens from a small town, and of course, Billy Vessels also. And there's Jason White with his picture. Last year's Heisman Trophy winner, well-deserved. I think all the all four winners, somewhere around 24,000 people total of the four <laughs> towns from the Heisman Trophy winners of OU. Well, Jason White, they, they were questioning whether he would come back this year. He said he sat down with Bob Stoops, gave him all the information. They talked it out from top to bottom and said there was no question that he was going to come back this year. 3-10 to go. Jason White now has set his sights on Oregon. Next week's game, they lead. 3-10 to play in Norman, Oklahoma, where the number two ranked Oklahoma Sooners have dominated the Houston Cougars 63 to 13. And a lot of the fans have made their way to the parking lots, but we still have some of the faithful here. A crowd of over 84,000 on hand. And we take a look at Oklahoma's schedule. Next week, they host Oregon. Number 24 in the country, then at home against Texas Tech, and then, of course, October 9th, the date that everybody's got circled, Charles. Yes, the Texas game, and Oregon expected to come in here undefeated. They lost tonight at home to Indiana, got down big at the half, made a run at it. I believe the final score was 30-24. to 24. That's an upset for the Oregon Ducks, so they'll have to regroup and make the trip here to Norman for a big ball game next week. And Bob Stoops knows that... Uh, you know, he keeps that all in perspective, though, especially the Texas game. You know, down in Texas, a lot of people, you know, say you got to beat Oklahoma, but he has really been able, now granted, he's won four in a row, but he's been able to keep it all in perspective. Which he, and even what happened at the end of last year. Well, how about that? Texas leading Arkansas in the second quarter, 16 to 14. Hernie, of course, will have an update on that. Conclusion of our game. The game in Fayetteville. Remember, the Hogs beat the Horns last year in Austin. Jay Wolf again. Of course, the Sooners do play Kansas State and Nebraska this year. I wish they played Nebraska every year. Yeah, that's that's a rivalry that's been lost in terms of playing every year, and I think it's unfortunate. It's the unfortunate byproduct of expansion, but it's one that I think college football fans everywhere lament is not played each and every that's season. Right. That's one that you just knew. You turn on the TV around Thanksgiving time, and you have a right. great football game and a terrific rivalry, and I think everyone misses it every year. First down and 10 for the Sooner. Ready? Hands it off to DJ Wolf. Well, Craig Sager, we've talked a lot about Coach Browles and Stephenville High School. They have quite a tradition of winning football out there in Texas. Yes, they do, and obviously Sterling Doty, the center, and also Kevin Cobb, the quarterback, went to Stephenville. They led that last drive for a touchdown. We might as well give equal time and report that Stephenville, last night a big win over Alvarado by the score of 71-28. to <laughs> So Stephenville also undefeated in the ranks. And by the way, we talked about Ray Boo Boo Mancini being from Cardinal Mooney High School, the most famous alum from Stephenville. Not a football player. He is Ty Murray. It oh, is the Cowboy Capital the Rodeo. Rodeo. Not only is he the bull riding champion, but he's also married to Jewel. So he's got it going. All right. All around. Come on. Say, you've got it all going on. Let me tell you. I'll tell you, NASCAR, you know, Rodeo, we got it. That means he's got it all. All right, if he's that good, what are the nicknames for Stephenville High and Cardinal Mooney High? That's what I want to know. I mean, I know he's good. But let's see, let's see him pull that out. What about some nicknames? What are the team names? Well, Stephenville is very easy. It's Yellow Jackets. And I'm surprised you asked about Cardinal Mooney because that's way too easy. The Cardinal Mooney Cardinals. No, oh. come on. <laughs> the guy's got it all. You can't stump him. No, no, it isn't. It's like we give him some fine parting gifts. He's like 10 on Jeopardy. <laughs> can't stump the guy. We've got a fumble, and Houston does recover the football. Well, this will give the Oklahoma coaches something to chew on, won't it? Heading to films. That's right. Before the guys get too comfortable. We'll They're not going to like this. I see Brent Venables exhorting his defense. Now sudden change. Ball's tucked well. Handoff is clean. Nice job coming down the line by the Houston defender. Yeah. Trying to get the number there. Great job punching it out as he came down the line. You know, it's funny because one of the things that Bob Stoops told us on Thursday and on Friday was that they achieved all their goals pretty much for Bowling Green except for turnovers. Obviously, Adrian Peterson put the ball on the ground a couple of times and he had Bubba Moses fumble. 
He said we need to clean that stuff up because this is a team that didn't fumble. They only had 17 turnovers all of last year. And that was a school, That's record. A school record. And tonight what we've seen we just saw the fumble there and I saw a couple bad quarterback center exchanges with Tommy Grady. One of them was whistled dead. Another one you know I think both of them might have been whistled dead but that'll go into Bob Stoops' memory banks and give he and his staff something to work on when they get back on the field probably on Monday. Mm -hmm. But they'll see it in film when they watch that on Sunday. That's right. <laughs> well, let's take a look at some of the upcoming games next week. Of course, we will be at College Station, Texas, Texas A&M, Kyle Field. Once again, 7 o'clock Eastern time. We invite you to join us for that ball game. Then on September 25th, also at 7 o'clock Eastern time, we'll have the number one team in the country, USC, taking on Stanford. Then don't forget, October 2nd, we'll have a whole evening of football for you between both the Big 12 and the Pac-10. I saw USC now up 35 to nothing in the third quarter on Colorado State. So they're, they're liable to hold, they're likely to hold on to their number one ranking. Oklahoma, solid number two right now. Well, she thumping Arkansas State tonight also. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get back and forth after the tough, yeah. the tough go with Oregon State at home last week. Now Kendall Browse has taken over quarterback for the final 56 seconds, but he has done a nice job on the receiving end tonight. But they also want to make sure that he's ready as a backup quarterback. Should be, though. He's been playing in his dad's system for years. I think this is one of the reasons he wanted to come to Houston, not just to play for his dad, but he's a quarterback at Stephenville High. You mentioned it earlier, Ron, 16-0 state championship, put up big numbers before he transferred to a school near in Lubbock when his dad took the job at Texas Tech. And the rule of trying to play quarterback again was pretty strong for him. Matt Shermer, the big fullback out of Holton, Kansas. Number 32, Matt Shermer on the carry. And that will probably do it. And that's going to do it. Coach Browse comes to the center of the field. Coach Stoops comes to the center of the field. Houston falls to 0-2 on the year. Oklahoma goes to 2-0. And they win convincingly. The final 63-13 as they dominated after Houston scored on their opening drive. They led from the get-go after that. Bob Stoops keeps his record in September perfect. And his home streak perfect. Let's set it down to Craig Sager, who's with Jason White. Sags. Uh, Jason White right now congratulating the players from Houston. You come into this game, you win the Heisman last year, the number one ranking for most of the season, but yet you worked harder this summer than ever before. What did you want to accomplish this year? Uh, I think this team as a whole fell short last year, but our goals were, and we really worked hard this summer. We want to uh, finish our goals this year. Same offensive line as a year ago, possibly the best receiving quarter in the nation. Talk about the weapons you have this season. Like I said last year, you know, I'm the luckiest quarterback in America, and, you know, it shows last year, and it's, it's going to show this year. You know, they're a great group, group uh, with, with up front. They're, you know, a year more experienced, and the same at receivers, so, that's going to help us out in the long run. Last year you said the luckiest quarterback in the country. This year, possibly you mean it because your running game seems to be so much better. Oh, definitely. You know, it's going to. We really worked hard on it this fall and throughout spring, and you know, you can tell so far in the first two games, it's going to help us out in the long run. When you saw the Big 12 teams going down this weekend, beginning with Missouri and then Nebraska losing at home and Kansas State losing at home, did that have any effect on the way you prepared for this game? I think the the rest of the team. Including myself, looked at that as you know it can happen, and everybody knows it can happen in any game, and that's why you got to come out and be prepared every Saturday. And you were today. Congratulations. Thank you, Brian. All right, final score 63-13. Quick final thought, Charles Davis. As dominating as ever are the Oklahoma Sooners. Offense, defense, special teams. Antonio Perkins. They're as good as advertised, and only going to get better. Our next telecast next Saturday, seven o'clock. The Aggies host the Clemson Tigers. For Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and the rest of our crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Norman, Oklahoma. Now it's time for the Dodge Post Game Show with Ernie Johnson.